Redditors have grew up filthy rich, what did you think was normal till you learned otherwise? Honestly, it was the little things. I knew we had nicer cars than average, a bigger house, went on more trips, etc. But I thought everyone's refrigerators had wood paneled cabinet doors. For example, we had a sub-zero built-in refrigerator and freezer. The first time I saw a metal fridge I thought it was weird, and I thought it was even weirder that the fridge and freezer were combined. But then I got really jealous because you could put magnets on it. I also thought everyone had a central vacuum system where you can sweep dirt into a little hole under the cabinets by the floor and it sucks it up. We had these little holes all over, in every room. Stuff like that. Probably a weird example but, growing up all of our dishes were made of fine china, waterford glassware etc. And I just thought that's what plates and stuff were made of because we didn't have anything else. Then one time I went to a friend's house for dinner and we ate on colored plastic plates and non-matching plastic cups. I just thought that was the weirdest thing ever and asked why we were eating with camping dishes. I myself am not rich, but I have an uncle who is very well off. So one of my not rich aunts was complaining about her car acting up on her. Well my cousin from the rich family was listening and got really confused. So he just asked her well, why don't you just get rid of it and go buy another one this kid was probably 13 or so at the time and had no concept of not enough money. He couldn't understand why you wouldn't just go get a new something if your old something didn't work. I thought everyone got to eat dinner quite often with the president. I always thought the president has dinner at random houses until I learned otherwise when I finally joined regular school. I was homeschooled till I was age 9, and no kid believed my dinner story. Dad was ambassador of Kenya to Saudi Arabia. Kidnapping. Whenever we traveled there were guards. I was trained in what to do if it happened. We had insurance policies against it. When I dated a middle class suburbanite and talked about it she thought I was paranoid, but that was a thing. I remember my parents having a sit down talk with me after a parent teacher meeting and letting me know that there was one student in our class that was feeling insecure because his family was the only one that didn't have a lake cottage or mountain home. Ah yes, the best way to help a child get over his insecurities, tell the rest of the children in his class about them. My parents paid in full for my $60,000 a college tuition. I was always grateful for that. But it wasn't until the postgrad reality of my friends working to pay off their student loan debt while I was able to directly pursue my professional goals that I truly realized the advantage that I had from my parents wealth. I had always known we were well off, but it wasn't until after college that I truly appreciated that, I guess. I hope I can pay them back for that someday. I would say rich in the area, by comparison. I think the moment it really sunk in was during 5 stroke 6th grade, around middle school. I felt like I was getting too cool for little kid parties so I decided I wanted to go somewhere and do something fun. My parents were super excited about this since it meant I was taking one stupid middle schooler with us on a mini trip instead of having 15 stupid middle schoolers in the house. I decided on a trip to some festival, which meant a ferry ride and then drive to a Canadian city and have a big fancy meal. The girl I picked had been my friend for years. I had no idea her life was so different. She lost her mind on the ferry it was so fun. She had never seen Canada before so we stopped and took her picture. My parents realizing immediately that is was a huge deal for this girl bought her and I souvenirs, which she later gave to her mom since her mom has never left the area. My mom would not let her order the cheapest thing on the menu, which I never realized is something poor children are trained to do. I thought you could just pick whatever you wanted to eat. She was the first person in her family to travel more than 30 miles from her house. This was pre 9-11 when a family could just take a random child with no id and a permission slip from their parent into another country. We are both adults now, and occasionally run into each other. She is married with four children and still talks about the time we rode a ferry and went to Canada. Had she not brought it up, I probably would have forgotten. My mom used to take us to the mall and drop $500 in a day without thinking about it. Budgeting in general was a foreign concept until I racked up credit card debt that I couldn't pay off immediately. I was pretty poor as a kid but lived in a wealthy city, so most of my friends were quite well off. One time my friend's dad took us to a comic book convention and he bought me a $25 book just because I was looking at it and seemed to like it. 
It absolutely boggled my mind that someone would spend $25 on me for no occasion and without agonizing over the decision. I spent my late teens and early 20s butlering for a very very wealthy, not billionaires but not far off, family. They had two school age kids that I would drop off in the morning. The older, 7 maybe 80 the time of the two was amazed to learn that I didn't have a holiday home to go to when I took time off. I feel bad having said this while joining a friend on a road trip up into the mountains at his brother's house. There was slow as balls internet at the house we were going to and the connection dropped frequently. I didn't have my car with me since I was on a road trip with someone else at the time. This was also before personal wifi was a thing. And my cell phone at the time was a state of the art brick phone from Nokia thus no hotspot. Me. If there's any way I could borrow a car to hop into town for internet tomorrow that would be awesome. Friend, well, my brother uses his car every day and I'm using mine to go to that event we talked about. Me, that's fine. Is it okay if I just use his extra car? Awkward silence. Until, friend, he just has that one car. LOL I drove a crappy 96 Taurus in high school. One day I drove my friends into town. A well off girl, drove a new BMW. I didn't know very well came along. When we got out of the car. She asked me if my car locks, like she thought it was so crappy it didn't come with a lock. Growing up I thought apartment buildings were only for college students. I didn't know families lived in them. My family was not filthy rich. I grew up in the San Francisco Bay Area not out in the country. My friend in high school was filthy rich, and he would always wear suit jackets and fedoras. One day he said I wanted to wear my other purple suit. But the jacket was at my third house. It was some Gatsby level extravagance. Your friend was a solid argument that money can't buy good taste. Going on ski holiday every year. Living in Germany, where the Alps are just a 2 hours drive away. But still flying to western Canada for skiing at Whistler Mountain. But I like this snow. I was trying to show a friend of mine that she's rich because her family has a team of maids and drivers. Seriously, a driver for every member of the family. She said she's not rich, because everyone has maids and drivers. I asked her, do you think your maids and drivers have maids and drivers? I think then it clicked that she might be rich. John Travolta told a cute story about his daughter once. They had to fly commercial once and she was shocked, incredulous, and asked, Daddy. Who are all these people on our plane? She thought everyone had their own 757. To never discuss the affordability of things within a family. I thought it was totally taboo. Which isn't to say I got everything I wanted growing up. I was an obsessively frugal kid. But I was never denied something on the basis of we can't afford that. I was pretty shocked in elementary school when my friend's mom told her they couldn't afford to buy something. I guess in my mind it was impolite for parents to talk about money issues with kids and it hadn't yet dawned on me that sometimes that's unavoidable. Maybe the point where it gets a bit stranger is when things like affordability weren't even discussed when picking out colleges and living accommodations. Fortunately, I got to go to a great school for pretty much free, but I'm pretty sure they'd have put me through NYU and med school if I'd asked. It was also interesting going apartment shopping with friends that were all still financially dependent on parents but were definitely having what can we afford conversations in ways that just weren't coming up in my family. I lived overseas for a year when I was in high school and attended an international school where, though my family was decidedly middle class in the US and my dad was being paid several times more to work abroad than he had been at home, I'm fairly certain my family were the least well off in the entire school. None of these kids ever seemed to realize how fabulously wealthy they were. A few examples. Several boys from North Korea. I don't know exactly how high up in the political world of the DPRK you need to be to be allowed to send your children abroad for an education, but these kids showed up to school in brand new Benzes. For a start, one friend of mine lived in a luxury high rise in the single richest enclave of the city where I lived. His parents lived on the 16th floor. Each floor was a single unit. He lived on the 17th floor in his own unit. He had his own live and maiden and driver as well. Another friend's parents ran the largest import-export company in the country. He had two bodyguards, and was driven around in his own armored, bulletproof SUV. The windows were two inches thick and didn't roll down. I attended his birthday party, 
which was on his dad's 180 feet super yacht. It was not uncommon for my friends to spend 3 day weekends in Bali, the Maldives, or wherever their vacation home s happened to be. I'm still friends with several of them through social media, and the most frequent post I see from several of them is after for the week, then on to end. Those locations almost always being on 3 separate continents. My family was broke as heck, but my mom was, and still is, a teacher at this really nice private school which was the only reason my brother and I could attend. Everyone's parents were doctors and lawyers, you get the idea but why brother and I were being raised by a single mom who had just relocated, we were living in a trailer park in the middle of nowhere for the cheap butt rent, we didn't always know when the next meal was coming. One day, during lunch, the kids notice that all I have is a peanut butter sandwich and a tiny bag of pretzels. One dude says wow, you must really not be hungry, since I was 6 and just as clueless to any other lifestyle as he was. I just straight up told him we don't have any more food. I had to explain it a couple of times before he realized. Lunch bro sheepishly asks if I would like some of his food. That orange and baggy of cheetahs were the start of a now 20 year long friendship. I thought until the start of high school that a $100 bottle of wine was cheap. Expensive ones rise several thousands after all. At the end of the year we decided to offer our retiring teacher a bottle of wine and he said. Don't buy a $100 bottle. I made a joke about how picky he was and made a fool of myself. Reminds me of the movie Meet the Parents, where the guy goes to the local grocery and tries to get some good champagne to impress his in-laws. All they had was mum. When he mentions to the cashier that he was looking for something more expensive, well, you could get a whole bunch of mums is the reply. My 8 year old came home from school last year and told me that not everyone had a tennis court. In fact, he said, nobody but he had a tennis court in his class. He was amazed that other kids played in the street, instead of their own tennis court. The tennis court is old and crappy, but it makes a great play area, paved, and with a 10 feet fence around it. I have many kids, who have many friends. It's nice to have a pen to keep them and during parties. I think the term you're looking for is prison yard, not tennis court. This girl I knew was rejected from a law school because her diversity statement was written about her struggle of riding commercial to Europe for the first time. I was poor growing up, and most of my friends were poor middle class. There was this one dude who drove a crappy, falling apart beta car. He was always hustling to and from work, trying to make a buck to afford repairs for his car. We all thought he was lucky just to have a car. One night, after we had been friends for a while, he invited a bunch of us over to his house, even offered to pick us all up, since no one else had our own wheels. Imagine our surprise when we rolled up into the ritziest neighborhood in our area. Dude lived in a freaking mansion, indoor pool, elevator, the whole nine yards. We were flummoxed. Someone said dude, we had no idea you were rich. His answer, I'm not rich, my parents are. They worked very hard to get that way. At first we felt bad for him. Freaking filthy rich parents and dude is working his butt off to afford a beta. Now I get it though. Just wanted to point out. I grew up in a major east coast city with a good, though sometimes annoying, public transportation network. Having a car wasn't a necessity by any stretch but it did make life a bit easier. Having a car at 17 of any sort was definitely impressive in my circle. It was one of the outer boroughs of NYC. Interesting to know so many other cities have annoying public transportation. Through the entirety of elementary school I would buy ice cream for my class on Fridays at lunch. The money came from flipping Pokemon cards, paper jewelry, and of course, mostly from my dear old dad. It doesn't seem like much, but we all came from a very poor rural town with one store and one school. Our playground at school was a stretch of course pavement. It was like the 60s in the 90s. My dad had just started up his own machine shop in town which employed 10 or so. My slight business sense as a kid coupled with my dad's business sense made us rich. Everyone would call us boss man which is probably where I began realizing that being a boss man wasn't the norm. My dad taught me a lesson after he realized I was spending all my money on the other kids. If you want to make a lasting impression, let's really give something back and fix up that old playground. My dad's machine shop then produced and installed an entire playground system for our school at no cost. 
It was that day I knew what it meant to be a good man and that I wanted to be just like my dad. And what's funny is that I wanted to be absolutely nothing like him once I hit the teenage years. Now, I'm a grown man and a splitting image of my dad in the flesh as well as in character. I appear to have gone off on a tangent. I'll stop the story here. My dad gets a stonewall look on his face as if his soul is squirming when people are more than gratuitous toward him. I guess it makes him uncomfortable or he's just unusually modest. He's always been the you would have done the same. A handshake. And that's that kind of guy. I want to show him this thread but I know he'll tear up and then I will too and then it's all aboard the crybaby train. I can't believe this turned out as big as it has. I'm glad I could tell you all a little about my dad and I. Thanks for reading and have a great day wherever you may be. That was really cool of your dad and his company to do that. And sounds like you learned the lesson he was going for. When I found out my dad paid off a multi-million dollar mortgage in less than 5 years, that's when I knew one was not like the others. I grew up dirt poor and, when I met my husband, was dirt poor myself. He came for an upper middle class family where everyone got college paid and they always had new things. My husband has never been unemployed and doesn't understand how someone can be unemployed. I remind him all of the time that when he met me, I was unemployed. Yeah, but you just had some crappy things happen to you. That's all. Um, yeah, honey, that's how it works. <laughs> Complaints about airport security. We never got around to owning a plane, but most of our family friends who we would vacation with would share theirs with us. Basically you show up at the local airport and hop right on. If we ever took a commercial jet, we had a prepaid tar pre-check that let us zip through our own security line. I never understood why people would say they planned on heading to the airport 2 hours before their flight. Comma we never got around to owning a plane. Sorry, peasant. This thread is reserved for the filthy rich only. Flip side, growing up in the projects. I thought that people that lived in trailer parks were rich because they had their own house among many other odd beliefs. My mom never worked, instead she stayed at home and raised each one of her four sons in succession. So there was a point when I was shocked to learn that other kids moms had jobs and didn't just play them watch them take them on excursions every day. Obligatory. We were never rich but I feel like this qualifies. Also mom got her masters and had to go back to work so that we could pay the mortgage and have health insurance once dad's business took a crap at the beginning of the recession. My boyfriend's family was pretty poor compared to mine. So when we discuss our childhoods we notice some pretty glaring differences for example, he was telling me recently about how they would leave the kitchen stove on, and open, in his house for the heat in winter, no central heating air something I completely took for granted as a kid. I think people start with not filthy rich because everyone looks up and sees people with more money than them, rich and poor will always be relative, so I can't help but start with saying that while my parents aren't filthy rich, it never occurred to me that it wasn't that normal to have a fully owned house without any mortgage. I thought renting was something only people in their 20s had to do. I thought doctors and lawyers lived in the poor part of town. You know, the guard gated communities with golf courses in them. I don't think I realized they weren't poor until I got to college. Ro, this reminds me of when I used to live in Santa Barbara. We were dirt poor college students living in heavily subsidized campus housing. And I had a conversation with a man in his mid 60s who told me he really wanted to retire but he couldn't find anyone to take over his job because nobody in his line of work could afford to live in our area. Dude was a pediatric surgeon. I wasn't the one who was filthy rich, but I went to a fancy private school from 9th grade to 12th grade on scholarship. There were tons of kids there who didn't know exactly how rich they were. I remember one girl complaining about how her parents were buying a third house in Florida but that it cost 1 million less than her main home, which was around 4-6 million. I have so many stories where the rich kids from my school didn't realize just how rich they were. It was pretty sad. Only middle class, but I realized I was globally rich when in the marines. Filipino folks were taking our trash to fix their roofs. Now I am internally rich too. I remember going to India and giving about 10 rupees, roughly 10 pence or 15 cents, to a homeless woman. She was basically in tears. It's as if I saved her life or something. That was a big wake up call. When my stepdad started college, 
he went out to dinner with his friends. When they got their bill and were getting ready to leave, he was really confused. He had never had a one course meal. He was under the impression the next three would be coming any moment. Discovering that other people's parents didn't have 100 plus properties in their investment portfolio. We had quite a frugal lifestyle, so I just assumed that most middle class had a few investment properties and that's where all the money went. My mom was really into fashion, so I used to get rid of old clothes pretty much every season and have new clothes almost constantly. I realized this wasn't normal around middle school and high school when people talked about having their clothes for years at a time. Old habits are hard to break, but I shop a lot less than she did. At least we gave the old clothes to goodwill. Watching sports center reruns all morning in college and complaining I was bored. A poor kid finally schooled me on the fact everyone else had to work to put themselves through college and become indentured servants to pay off their student loans. Oh wow, still not getting a job though. Serious question. What kinds of jobs or circumstances allow people to make millions of dollars per year besides some CS and some stock investors? We weren't insanely rich, but upper middle class. I never realized that other kids didn't get to travel as much as we did. By the time I graduated high school I had been to 10 countries and countless states. Now as an adult working two jobs to keep my head above water, I'm grateful for how lucky I really was. This wasn't me but a filthy rich friend didn't know that filet mignon beef tacos was not the norm. I grew up in a foreign country where, by comparison, we were rich. Coming back to the US as a young kid I learned pretty quickly having house staff was not the norm. I stopped mentioning those things in conversations with other kids. We had a house boy. I mean what position is that even? I grew up pretty isolated. So I didn't realize that there were smart poor people who just weren't told they were smart every day of their lives. It never occurred to me that people could be smart and not praised for it. My family used to be pretty rich when I was really young. Never had to look at prices when shopping. Not anymore though. Everything is embroidered to a certain point. From zebras to toasters. Everything appears to be embroidered when you don't know any better. I can't think of any reason why, but the patterns in the air just really mess with your perception. See, when you're rich and have all this extra money, there isn't any reason to not get personalized everything. So everything else seems like it was embroidered by someone or something. Getting best medical care and $100 allowance every week. I got paid more by my dad than I did with my first job. I had a friend whose dad managed a bunch of Budweiser factories and she sent me a picture of her new car which was a Lamborghini. I sent her a picture of my 1993 Honda Del Sol and she then realized she was rich. What screams I'm way richer than I look? Unique or somewhat odd collections of things most people don't collect. I worked in a high-end whiskey store for many years, and the number of shabbily dressed men from overseas who strode in to spend $5,000. $10,000 on whiskey for their collection was staggering. They were always chatty, knowledgeable, and above all casual. One man in particular had been collecting for decades. His wife was fully supportive. She had her own collection of rare items, he implied, and he enjoyed traveling the world to pick them up as an excuse to go someplace. Conversations often went like this. Customer, I see from your website you have the rare bottling from 1967. Do you have any in stock now? Me, we do. Yes, it's downstairs. In fact we have a few of that vintage, as well as the 1953, 1966, and 1972. Would you like to know the prices? Customer, oh, great. I think that fills a couple of gaps in my collection. And if not the guys and my wife will enjoy cracking one open. Can you package them up for me please? Me. Would. Would you like to know how much they are? Sir. Customer. Can you ship them all to my place? In fact. If you have discounts for bulk items. I'd like to know what other vintages you have. And so on. That sounds awesome. I'd love to be able to do that one day. I went to dinner with a GF and her parents. After we ate. 
The owner came out and asked how the meal was and then we left without a bill ever coming to the table. On the way home I asked GF about it and she said her dad had tabs at all the restaurants he liked to eat at. As we were leaving the valet brought the cars around and I mentioned I liked his Tahoe. I asked what year it was and he kind laughed and said whatever is the newest one. I didn't know he owned a car dealership in another city. After we ate the owner. I work at a luxury resort. People call to book rooms with me all day and they aren't cheap. I can tell when it's obvious a young couple who had to scrape together the dough for the cheapest room. But every once in a while I'll get a call from someone who casually calls and asks to book the biggest room without asking for the price. They know exactly what they want and the price means nothing to them. 2.5k a night? No biggie. Here is my card number. When you said a young couple who had to scrape, I felt that. I had reason to frequent a small but popular marina at a certain gulf coast city. I encountered one old man often. Enough we greeted each other with random chit chat. Lovely gentleman. He wore a crumpled old hat, a grease spotted t-shirt, cut off jeans, and worn deck shoes. He always putted around the largest yacht in the marina, about 60 feet long. He would polish the chrome, wash the deck, clean the life preservers. I didn't assume he was the maintenance guy because he had such self confidence. I never saw him actually take it out. I got up the nerve to ask security who he was. He owned most the commercial real estate in the city. I represented a guy who was as rich. I mean as in filthy. Owns buildings. Plural. In Manhattan. I was in house counsel to his company. So one day he comes to my office and tells me he needs me to go to a meeting with him cross town and about 30 blocks north. He tells me to wait he has to get the car. So I am standing on the street. And he pulls up in the company van that his employee use for building maintenance. To carry stuff to renovate spaces for new tenants. Etc. It's pretty crappy. On the way I asked him why he was driving this. All things considered. He was an older self made guy who was pretty down to earth. Earth? Why the van? He said obviously he could drive or take a cab years before Uber but why bother? In Manhattan most spaces in Midtown on down are parking for commercial vehicles only, and parking a car can be pricey. The van had commercial plates, so he could pretty much park in front of wherever he was going. Why waste money on a cab or parking a car? Couldn't argue with that. We parked right in front of the building. There's a prominent airline executive in Ireland who infamously bought a taxi license for his personal driver for similar reasons. They avoid any discussion of money. When paying for anything they like to do it privately quietly before anyone else is aware. So you end up walking in and out of places feeling like you haven't paid, almost as if money doesn't exist. They don't flaunt it. Source. I was dating a girl and didn't realize she and her whole family were rich until her dad picked us up for dinner in a brand new Mercedes. Proceeded to pay for everything during our trip. And our Christmas presents were first class flights to the US from Australia. For a ski holiday. That's around 10 Australian dollars 15k. 7 US dollars 11k. Per person. He also financially supports his other daughter at Cornell University living in the US. I grew up poor. And still am. LOL. But I never realized how poor until I met that family. Oh god. I dated a rich girl in high school but didn't realize it until it was time to meet her dad. She had me meet them at a restaurant that there was absolutely no way I could have afforded the tip, let alone my meal. It was awkward. For me. At least. Assuming I wasn't going to pay anything when the check came. The type that nonchalantly offers you a spot in their luxury box at a game or concert, or covers your course fees at a golf outing even though you barely know them. Back in high school I used to do rowing, and at the rowing club there was this guy who wasn't great at socializing, was a little awkward, but he was friendly so I didn't mind him. We often went out on the same boats and would talk to each other, as much as was possible while rowing, and at the end his dad would always pick him up afterwards wearing sweatpants, slippers and a hoodie. You might understand why. Then, I didn't believe my friend when he told me that they were one of the richest families in the world. I looked them up, and sure enough, there they were, worth an estimated 15.5 billion dollars. Now whenever I see someone out in public looking like they are wearing what they slept in I always assume they're mega rich and don't care about a thing anymore. Not knowing prices for common household items foodstuffs, 
Either they're getting the super deluxe version and don't know the standard price or they haven't done their own food shopping for years. Or they just don't pay attention to the price because they know they can afford it no matter what. If they are over 60 but have perfect teeth. This applies more in countries other than the US because everyone seems to have perfect teeth there. Really good teeth cost a lot of money. Controversial opinion. Teeth can be too white. It can look unnatural and off-putting to me. Especially if she's playing an impoverished girl on the planet Jakku. My boss drives a $2000 Mercedes from the 80s. Usually wears jeans and crappy clothes at all times. No jewelry or watch. Owns a 150k USD house. He's worth 2 billion. Yet, yeah, all his liquid income is sent directly to the mechanic for maintaining the Mercedes. Old boss to a company I worked for. He drove an old Toyota Hilux and worked in the factory of the building. I remember work breakup I spotted him put 300,000 on a roulette table. Doubled it and put it in his pocket. He would always ask me impossible questions at work and once I got it right. He bought me lunch. I mean old Toyota's Japanese cars are cool. When people think of expensive clothing, they often think of fancy brands like Gucci, but really rich people usually consider these brands to be tacky for the most part. There are entire luxury brands of suits dresses clothing watches etc that are used to display wealth among upper class people that would be kind of innocuous to the average person. Most anyone could recognize a Rolex. But to a person who isn't in on upper class moors, a Patek Philippe might slip under their nose. Patek Philippe sells some watches that the average person might assume are Rolex expensive, but they're actually six figures. One of my high school bros is freaking rich, while rest of us are very normal. He did nothing special, but he always wander around at near shops after school, some random branded shop that no high school boys will ever need. One time we finally asked him why he didn't went back home after school. He said he is waiting for his driver to come. Another time I met him very coincidentally at the boarding place at the airport I was going to Vienna and he is to London. He has nothing on him, no bags or carriages, and his hair is wet. Turns out he just took a shower in the lounge. Afterward, we are still very good friends. Man, I've been in those airport lounges a few times. You really live life when you can actually go there normally, rather than through some exception. There was this one time where I had to attend a meeting with the company president. I had to wake up hella early cause the meeting was arranged early in the morning. We were all in formal attire and very serious, I expected the president to be the same. But instead, he showed up in his pajamas with his cute Pikachu mug and asked us, Why the heck are you in suits so early in the damned morning? It honestly made me smile and took all my nervousness away. I still work for the company and they're currently good friends. Your president has a sense of humor. Read a bunch of comments and didn't see this. Freedom over their time. Not having a steady job or having to constantly be somewhere at a specific time. I remember being in a cruise and one of the families in one of the penthouse suites didn't sleep in their suite when we were at Bora Bora overnight because they had rented an overwater bungalow. Minimum $1000 a night. Same family got a hotel room when anchored at another atoll because they wanted to use the hotel services while spending time on the white sand beach. I have a friend from the top 1-2% in his respective country but you'd never be able to tell. Except he'd always pay for our food when we went out with him and would sometimes be confused about the price of certain things or why we couldn't just do certain things, because they'd require big amounts of money. Another certainly wealthy foreign friend invited my entire family to stay in his family's second house. He never talks about money but it somehow slipped that he's got a golden credit card although I don't know the implications behind having such. Or a wealthy family I used to live with. We went to McDonald's drive through in our pajamas several times. Very carefree. The really exquisite credit cards are never golden. A lot of small in the no things. Like a certain wristwatch that costs a fortune but for most people is indistinguishable. From afar, from say a 2000 euro watch, or a really expensive pen, there's a lot of famous really expensive looking clothes and accessories like Dolce & Gabbana or Mont Blanc. 
Stuff that's noticeable and recognizable. But then there's a whole bunch of way more discreet fashion and design brands that can cost a tenfold more and are at first glance indistinguishable from the normal high price range. They usually have a discreet logo or a distinct feature by which you can tell them apart. While they certainly have a good quality lots of times, their price performance ratio is basically non-existent. So I think they exist only for the precise purpose of saying I'm way richer than I look. Not rich, but collect fountain pens is a hobby. Very few of us choose modern Mont Blancs, as they are overpriced and have quality control issues. While my most expensive pen is a bit unusual looking, very few people would guess how much money I have wrapped up in my own case, and don't even get me started on inks. I had a very rich friend who invited me to her birthday dinner at a Michelin starred restaurant. I almost didn't go because I knew I wouldn't be able to cover my share of the bill, but I saved up for it to be a good friend. I showed up and she had rented out the entire restaurant and covered the bill for the three course dinner with specialty cocktails for all 100 guests, several of whom she had flown in from Europe to join her. I knew she was rich, but not that rich. Wearing sunglasses on the shirt instead of on top of the head. I had a job where I came in contact with quite a few very wealthy people. They all did this. I deduced that it's because rich people have solid, heavy sunglasses. Probably expensive hair too. Having the mindset, as long as it still works, I don't need a new one. Being able to afford things that last so you don't need to buy new stuff constantly. A lot of people mentioned rich guys wearing regular or super relaxed clothing and just not giving a frick. And while I definitely think that's true, oftentimes, paired with that outfit, they wear an insanely expensive watch. It's just something most people don't notice because they don't know what these watches look like. Yes, or some other accessory, like an expensive pair of sunglasses, or their loafers are very high end. I've had one customer who would enter in jeans and a t-shirt, maybe a baseball cap, looking totally average, but his shoes were fine Italian leather, we sold work boots, and he owned a large trucking company and had an account for his employees with us. Working not because you need the income, but because you enjoy the power of your position. My mom used to work for a guy that was a VP of an international corporation, basically handling all their finances and legal issues. He owned several malls too and invested in large amounts of property. He was in his 70s. At a Christmas party one year, somebody asked him why he hadn't retired. With a smile, he responded with it's not about the money. Not knowing the price of cheap food at all, such as instant ramen or cheapest crappy sandwich. My grapmate's father is CEO of Huge Car International Corporation, so when we went to store along she was so surprised, seeing the price of cheapest instant ramen and also she said that doesn't know how they actually taste with kind of confused innocent face, without any being cocky. I think the point where you don't know grocery prices well happens before you are rich. I make just over 100k and don't really worry about the grocery bill. Look at the watch and shoes. That's always a tell. Some rich people dress like crap, but they always get good watches. First class seats, not business. And feeling comfortable. I had once the opportunity to fly first class and it was written all over my face that I didn't belong there. I worked at a bank for several years in the early 2010. Everyone that is broke as frick would come in looking like hot crap. A lot of disheveled looking older folks were the loaded ones. My bot wears cargo shorts, a polo shirt, crappy sneakers, and a snapback hat every single day. He coordinates the hat color with the shirt lol it's like a cartoon closet, and generally looks like the guy that should be mopping up the floor. He's worth 5 mil. Customers who would otherwise be yelling to speak to the owner walk past him without batting an eye. I used to work as a nanny in Dubai. My first family there really tried to show off their money. Paid lots of money for a number plate with low numbers on it for their car. IDK. It's a thing there. Always made sure that the brand names on their bags shoes whatever was clearly visible. Made it a huge deal that someone in the family was married to a sheikh. Had a holiday house in France that they constantly talked about. ETC etc. I thought they were super rich because hadn't ever been around anyone with that much money before. Moved on to my second family, and the difference was huge. For starters, 
They had recently moved to Dubai and hadn't found a house they liked yet so they rented a freaking 3 floor flat in a super fancy hotel for 6 months before moving into their house. Like it was no big deal to live in a hotel where the fee for a night was probably more than my monthly salary. The first family had always put kids and nannies in economy class while traveling, this family had everyone flying first class or business class if seats weren't enough, when they didn't use the extended family's private jet. They tip ridiculously well everywhere we went and generally spent huge amounts of money on all kinds of things, but never made a big deal out of it. But sometimes the mother would lock herself in her bedroom and cry while watching the news about starving kids in Yemen, or the war in Syria, but it didn't seem to ever occur to her that she could donate money to any of these causes. A weird zen you can only achieve when you have no financial pressures and you can focus on yourself and those around you. This may sound weird, but driving a Toyota Land Cruiser, on the outside, it's nothing special, and appears to just be a basic Toyota SUV, until you look at how much it costs. Base model prices are about 85k, I read zone whether the truly wealthy people in the Hamptons can tell you who has true wealth, and who is merely rich. Truly wealthy people will buy Land Cruisers as other wealthy people realize what it is. Rich people will buy the more traditional expensive vehicles, BMWs, Mercedes, etc. IDK, all the rich people I know drive Tesla, BMW and Porsche cars, while the one person I know who is truly wealthy drives a V12 Bentley and an Aston Martin. Depending on how he's feeling that day, all of them are very kind and don't flaunt their money though, except the guy that drives the Porsches. He flaunts sometimes lol. When my place got wrecked by Hurricane Harvey, I mistook the owner of the hotel I wound up at with a customer. His clothes looked great, but they also looked just one step above Walmart. He would also bring dinner to the guests on Wednesday nights, which him and his staff would personally cook. He was extremely easy to talk to, even knowing that he owned the place I was staying at. Banker here. The wealthier clients are the less they're concerned about their appearance. When you're broke you care what people think. When you're loaded you can be as eccentric as you want. Also look at assets rather than money in the bank. I see people that make millions every year with seemingly little savings because they're paying down 10 plus mortgages at a time. You may see a fancy car but I find that watches and houses are far more of an indicator. I'm a little late, but ironed or pressed everyday wear. Ever wonder why their everyday wear clothes stand out? They pay someone to hand wash, press and hang all their clothes. Source I have worked privately for millionaires and one billionaire. My GF. She goes around with like casual clothes. I know for a fact her mom runs a company with like 9 different important patents and they have a frick load of money. Also my boss at work, walks around with dirty clothes while making I believe about 100k dollar sign a month. I'd be happy with 100k a year. Not trying to show your money by wearing it or constantly spending. My parents are very wealthy. My dad wears the same clothes he had in the 70s or free t-shirt he's gotten along the way. Mum gets a lot of her clothes at Costco. They only have one car and it's a 2011 Lexus because it works well and they don't see the need to buy a new one. They live in a 3 million dollar house because it's in the safest neighborhood and has all the things they wanted for their grandkids to come be able to play. Really wealthy people just do themselves and don't care what others think. No logos. Subaru Legacy, rather than Range Rover. Beaten up watch, usually a Jaeger Lecolta. Being called Ralph but pronouncing it Rafe. My mother, while not rich herself, grew up in a very affluent part of New York State. She said the richest people usually drove fairly mundane cars and didn't dress particularly fancy, because they knew the value of a dollar. After all, a Volvo is going to get you much more bang for your buck than a Maserati. That's how you stay rich. Honestly, dressing poorly or casually in an environment where you would expect people to be looking nice. I used to work at a decently high-end car dealership. Best sale I ever made was to a middle-aged guy in a floppy hat, unbuttoned Hawaiian shirt, bought shorts and flip-flops, 75 plus miles from the beach. I was pretty new still, and greeted the guy when my co-workers all mysteriously went on smoke breaks when he sauntered onto the lot. Just a local millionaire swinging by to pick up a few cars as gifts for his graduating grandchildren. Five cars.
Top trim. No haggling. Full warranty. Put them all on an Amex Centurion card. Back in the day, it was driving station wagons, but higher end foreign models. It was a very understated way of saying, I am successful and wealthy enough to take care of my family comfortably. I'm driving a very well built family car, and I have enough money that I really don't care what you think. I'd see a wagon, but lo and behold, it's an AMG E63 station wagon. The poor impress with what they wear, the middle class impress with what they drive, the upper middle class impress with where they live, the wealthy impress with what they do. From my ex, when he was schmoozing at a charity gala he got invited to as part of a college club thing he was in. Whenever you ask them what they do for work they shrug it off and say something like, I have volunteered for X charity in the past. It's standard conversation when you're breaking the ice. Oh, what do you do etc. But he said he stopped asking because no one had jobs. Or wanted to disclose what they were. A very sharp haircut with a professional blowout every few days. You can dress down all you want. But expensive hair is always noticeable. Have you seen Mark Zuckerberg? I work in management consulting and though we all get paid well and can afford nice things, more or less you're expected to dress for your day. That is to say, wear your nice stuff to your meeting with the big corporations where people will appreciate it, but if your client is a manufacturing facility in a business park, maybe don't wear your best suit, tie, and a Rolex. Essentially the rule is to dress to the same standard as the best dressed person there. Business is all about building relationships with people and if you choose to be unaware of your audience and come in dressed to the nines every time, they're all going to think you have your head up your butt and trust you less. People want someone they can relate to. Wealth understands that it's these sorts of connections that matter way more in the long run than the personal desire to flex on everyone. Someone who has normal, everyday middle class type belongings that takes immaculate care of the item shows wealth in my experience. Ex assistants to rich, powerful people, what's the most messed up behavior you witnessed during your employment series? I became friends with a colleague, a delightfully wealthy man and a minor member of European royalty. He wore bespoke suits on his time off, like, he specifically had them made for lounging. He had a 12,000 pound walking suit. He was very kind and affable. However out of touch with reality he was. I taught him how to order pints at the pub. The first time I showed him how to do it. He didn't have money because he never carried a wallet. He was in his 40s and led an active social life. But always had a servant on hand to do everything. I work for a very wealthy family in the commercial real estate market. And the one thing I have noticed is how much they lack a sense of time. They have had people doing everything for them for so long they no longer realize how long it takes to complete a task. One example, hey take this deposit to bank A it has to be deposited today. So it's 4.50 they close at 5 o'clock and it is a 25 minute trip one way. Using a my old account I work with or for this really old guy who is in his 80s. He tells me stories all the time from his past of all the crazy crap he's done there before coming to America and making his fortune here. The country he is from is known for corruption, especially in the past when he was there. He was a son of a influential and rich afpolitican. In his teenager years he used to basically do whatever he wanted. Think the devil's double but on a smaller scale. He said girls used to flock to him no matter what because he had money like that. There was this one girl he said didn't give him any chances and he really wanted her. So he took her and threw her into the car. Taking her to the middle of the forest before Cora was seeing her into having sex. Pretty much freaking rape. The girl's dad found out and he complained to the police. Instead of taking my CEO to jail, they made up a phony charge against the dad and threw him in jail. The dad was forced to drop the charges for his freedom. The police, the judge and any person with influence was in this guy's pocket. That's one of the most fricked up things I ever heard. And he told the story almost as if he's proud of it. This is easily the saddest thing I've read in this thread. Because it depicts an entire community that's willing to sacrifice the safety of innocent people for money and power. Ideally, a community should be willing to sacrifice money and power for the protection of individual people. I worked for owners, three brothers of a private bank and managed their properties. One had first edition uncut classic books purely for decoration. 
He also had a Rolls which required new tires due to sitting unused for months at a time. The steel belt flattened from the weight of the car. One wife called me all but accusing someone. Me of eating an $8 pizza at their country club which after numerous far more than $8 international calls turned out to be her son in town having lunch. This from someone with a running balance over $10 million on any given day. This from someone with a running balance over $10 million on any given day. My brain can't compute this. I interned at a production company. The CEO made me go get a new Blackberry for him. Took 4 hours to go downtown because it had to be bought in downtown LA for whatever reason. When I brought it back, he opened the plastic, turned it on, and asked what the frick is this? Why aren't my numbers on it? Well, it's brand new, you haven't updated it yet. This is useless. What the frick have you been doing for 4 hours? Well I was, smash, and he threw it on the ground. Literally, just smashed it. Freaking useless. I was flabbergasted. Old masters oil paintings, and modernist masterpieces. Recognizable ones you studied in school, leaning up against the wall, stacked against each other. Also, the wife's $40,000 per place set in China from which she ate her boxed mac and cheese. I used to work for a company hosting luxury car driving events where the customers came for a week or a weekend to learn to drive the latest models on ice. Most of the customers were polite or even nice, but whenever we hosted the Russian groups, everyone knew all bets were off. These guys had never heard a no that couldn't be turned into a yes with a wad of cash. The most memorable incident was when two of them flew in three, assumed, Russian prostitutes for a gangbang, and had their driver drop said prostitutes off at the airport the next morning just before picking up these guys wives from the same airport. I was told by the cleaning staff that the room they'd used was covered in blood and crap amongst other things. In high school, I helped do IT for a billionaire at his ranch. This guy had a private fiber run 40 plus miles out there. I put network drops, routers, desktop PCS, and TVs into several barns and guest houses. I was out there once working right before the owner was coming for a visit with some friends. Everything had to be perfect, so I was replacing some never been used year old computers with the latest never to be used models. Something went wrong with the shipping, and some things weren't on time. I talked to his assistant, and some guy flew the gear out the next day. This was the 90s and we're talking some routers and a couple of Dells. Blew my teenage mind. I was also impressed by his personal chefs, husband and wife, who arrived a few days before he did. Up until then, I don't think I really believe people still had full time staff like that. They were Italian and didn't speak much English. Mostly they just shouted at each other. It was awkward when I was installing gear in the kitchen. They were yelling and occasionally throwing things, but were very nice to me. Made me lunch one day even. Best sandwich I've ever had. I got to meet some of the other staff as well, and it was so weird to me. The ranch foreman basically ran the place like it was his, but there was no profit or anything. It just existed for the one or two times a year someone came out. Horses, some cattle, chickens, the whole deal. Just sort of, hanging out. He made six figures. The pilot who flew the computers out did all sorts of errand running, exclusively for this one guy. If there was no tasks, he just relaxed. He said he sometimes got to spend a week or more someplace exotic, just in case he was needed. That honestly sounds like a dope situation for everyone involved. The CTO of an IT company I worked for was born into a rich family and didn't know how to talk with his inferiors. He was so bad at human interaction our CEO forced him to go to some kind of class to learn how to interact with humans. This douchebag loved Porsches. He drove a couple to work, and he had one he would race at amateur races occasionally. One day one hour co-workers failed to meet us for lunch because he was broadsided on the way to the restaurant. For some reason after the accident he came back to work. We were standing around his cube and he's telling us about his car getting totaled when the CTO walked up. After hearing the story the CTO says, and I'm not embellishing, at least it wasn't a Porsche. Then he laughed and walked off. I think I know the CTO. The director of my former company was a nice enough woman, 
but she used her position to get employees to do everything for her. The head of human resources and finance was required to help manage her personal bank accounts, enroll her children in school, book her holidays, everything. She also had a nanny for her younger kids who was somehow being paid through the company for tax purposes, and so she wouldn't have to outlay the money. This is what Leona Helmsley went to prison for. I had a pro golfer hire me solely to list 90% of his belongings on eBay. Everything from huge TVs to golf club head covers. The odd part was he wanted everything listed for $0.99 and shipped as fast as possible when it inevitably sold. I lost that job when he went to jail for procuring said items with illegally gained funds from his invalid sister's inheritance. I was questioned but since I had no idea how he got rich, no charges were ever brought up on me. I just thought he was a weird eccentric rich guy that wanted new toys, and I assumed he had invested his pro golf earnings over the years he was sponsored by Nike after all. Probably illegal, but I would have gotten a friend to buy a bunch of the expensive crap for me as soon as I listed it. My first job was being an assistant to the CEO of a small warehouse based wholesaler operated as a pet project of a very rich man. The owner had a 5 year old toddler at the time and calling the kid spoiled would be like referring to the Pacific Ocean as moderately damp. This was one of those situations where it was crystal clear the kid had never, ever been told no to anything or had any sort of discipline. For some inexplicable reason the owner would bring him to work almost every day and let him run free, as the warehouse and accompanying offices were one large interconnected building. This often meant the rare be this toddler running around either breaking things, unpacking boxes and generally making the entire warehouse staff's job a ton more harrowing than they should have been as it was quite clear that making the kid angry in any way would result in the culprit losing their job. Which did happen at least once during my time there, when I wasn't refilling the coffee pot, xeroxing or running cat 5 cable. The vast majority of my time was spent trying to keep the kid away from the shipping conveyor and the other places in the building that could deliver a quick and painful death to the unwary. TL. DR. Rich boss bringing spoiled kid to work daily is the worst thing ever. Dude probably just took his kid there hoping the little bastard would get killed. Not an assistant per se, but I did have a short term IT contract gig at an investment firm of some kind. Small boostness huge money, don't think anyone there wasn't some 3 letter job title millionaire. Got to observe some business stuff. Most of the offices, for the upper up, actually they all seem to be upper ups, had private bathroom. If someone was out for a meeting or whatever of sight multiple people would intentionally take the nastiest shoots in that person's private bathroom, and not like one person, like 6 or 7 in series performing some kind of pre-planned unholy train of battleships of war, stench and destruction. Seriously, they timed this, giggling like a bunch of prep school teenagers in suits that cost more than my paycheck, and the fricked up part, it was like a routine thing around there. Everyone was doing it to everyone else. Guy would come back, find his private throne closet reacting of death and colonic waste demons hanging thick enough in the air you could distort visible light, and be laughing their asses off lol. Oh you guys got me, ha ha, got em good this time. What made it more unsettling was there seemed to be a kind of etiquette system built into the activity too. Apparently if someone was actually mad at you, they'd skip flushing, or run hot water to add extra steam. And half the time the victim could accurately name the last person who'd attacked the bathroom. S. I imagine this was fun for the janitor. Worked IT for a small company. The boss was Mormon and so every 9 months there was another kid running around. One day he called me at home to drive across town and help him with his home network for some under the table money. The neighborhood was gated and the guard was looking so far down his nose at my 1986 Civic that I thought his neck would break. The house was huge, but I knew something was wrong the moment I walked in the door. I have never seen such filth. I had no idea people could live like that. The maid hasn't come yet. Sorry for the mess. Yes that man just said they use a maid service so this was likely just a single week's worth of crap. The high chairs in the dining area were absolutely surrounded by garbage and food, dirty clothes everywhere etc. I guess when you have money you don't even need to clean your room anymore. I have indeed seen homes with lots of kids where they just freaking give up on that aspect. I give up and I'm just one guy. 
I had a role that was nominally professional, in a firm which was, and is, one of the UK's larger suppliers of household goods. More and more I got diverted into special transactions, and when I jibbed at it, was initially threatened then fired. The owner of the business, a gentleman from a foreign nation where it's still culturally 1949, was using the business to pay for his entire personal life, all his holidays, the apartment and care of his bigamous second wife and family, and major bribes to leading political figures in his homeland. Can't say too much as case pending. But I understand half the board of directors of the firm that nominally employed me are now facing jail. I talked to the authorities after they fired me. I also forwarded all the evidence to the ambassador of his home country. If they act on it, he's in crap so deep it can hardly be comprehended. It's far down in the thread, but I so hope this one is true. I used to be the assistant of a celebrity photographer in NYC, mostly hip hop celebrities and New York nightlife. This guy fricked so many women behind his wife's back, it was obscene. Once there was this model who needed portraits taken, but my boss was fricking her and his wife was suspicious, so he had me take the pictures instead, except he drove me there with his wife, but had to drop me off across town so his wife wouldn't know where I was going. Had to walk 20 blocks to get to the model's apartment. Also, if we worked until 3am, which was common, I would have to crash at his place or else I would have to sit in Penn Station for hours until the first NJ Transit train. He made me sleep on the floor. Even though he had a couch, I had to sleep on the floor. Everyone involved in the NYC upper class are bastards. Bastard coated bastards with bastard filling. Just waiting to frick you over. Comma once there was this model who needed portraits taken, but my boss was fricking her and his wife was suspicious, so he had me do it. For a minute there, I thought he made you go frick the model to prove to his wife, he wasn't doing it. My ex GF's little sister was dating and is now married to a rich older guy, much older. I heard some tearful confessions about how she was forced to have threesomes with him and prostitutes etc. Also, she used to babysit for his kids and they started dating when she was about 15 and he was closer to 50. I was briefly an assistant to a CEO of a large company in my country. I live in Northern Europe, and this guy was a real butthole to everyone. I just made coffee, ran with mail and copied things. I say briefly, because I only worked there for 3 weeks. I made an honest mistake, copying the wrong documents, resulting in a brief embarrassment on his side in an in-house meeting with some of the other big guys of the firm. I got called into his office, and knowing his history with previous assistants, I was visibly nervous. He then began absolutely shredding me for 15 minutes, completely red in the head, spit flying in my face as he stood above me, basically ripping me a new one. I started crying. This was my first job, and I was 15 at the time, and he stopped shouting. He took one finger to my chin, lifted my face up so I looked straight at him, and then he said you're nobody. Don't you ever forget that, and then he threw some paperwork at me to let me officially know that I was fired, which I then had to pick up from the floor, and then he yelled at me to get the heck out of his office. TL. DR. Got fired for copying wrong documents. Boss ripped me apart for 15 minutes and made me cry. First job ever. You're nobody. Don't you ever forget that. I thought buttholes like these only existed in movies. I used to work at a luxury car dealership as a mechanic. When the market tanked in 2007 to 2008 we were all convinced to take a dollar per hour pay reduction. That year. That year the owner bought a Maserati and we all got watches for Christmas for hitting some goal. He wasn't super rich and powerful but I used to work for a pretty reputable set of attorneys a few years ago. I started off file clerk and went up to receptionist. Anyways, one of the attorneys specifically just did not got a crap about his kids whatsoever. He didn't know their ages or their birthdays. He would have the office manager mark down all these things on her own personal calendar so that she could prepare gifts and whatnot for their birthdays. She even had her paying all their bills and rents. Some were in college, with his checks. One of his stepdaughters worked there for many years and he would sometimes forget about her and leave her in the office alone. She would have to call just to get picked up. The attorney was a pretty crappy guy but his complete lack of interest or care in his children's lives always disturbed me. 
Over the summer one year, I signed up to be an extra for a film by a man who had won an Oscar for directing a particular film because I liked theater. When I got there, I actually ran into the director almost immediately, who proceeded to tell me that I would no longer be an extra, even though I said twice no, sir, I'm supposed to be in these three scenes, and instead would be his wife's assistant for the day, she wasn't in the movie, she was just observing all day, but she still had a change of clothes for when she left that needed to go in a dressing room again, even though she wasn't acting in the movie. The guy, from what I can tell, is just the egotistical kind of wealthy, and not actually super rich, but the Oscar went to his head and he used it as an excuse to treat everyone on set like crap. Please tell us who the director was, please, I beg you. I held the corgis while she gave them each a suppository, posting before I read the comments but guessing this rates no more than a 3 stroke 10 on the messed up scale. CEO boss lady was built like a linebacker, I'm 115 pounds wet and small, when I had a seizure in the office, don't have to mention that it was stress related, her demeanor, devil wears Prada without the earned respect in the industry to somewhat justify its inhumanity, she climbed on top of me and shoved a stapler in my mouth so I would not bite my tongue, didn't get off when a nurse told her she was making it worse, had to be pulled off by fire and M's, I mean she cared right? I nannied for a tech millionaire. His wife had a raging eating disorder, which she covered up by being an athlete, and he didn't care enough to address. They had three children that she couldn't stand. She had a full-time housekeeper and two nannies to keep her kids from interacting with her. When dad was around, all smiles, as soon as he wasn't, she would get as far away from the kids as possible. She also signed them up for loads of activities so that she never had to see them. They all were in therapy at very, very young ages. I nannied for a couple of other families like this. Wives don't work but don't interact with their kids either. They just shop and lounge all day. And there's domestic violence in these families that's super well hidden. I saw a husband inches from his wife's face, shouting his head off because they were out of post-it notes and me and the other nanny just kept right on cleaning because we needed the job. Ugh. I hate rich people. They have the kind of problems that money doesn't fix. Comma they have the kind of problems that money doesn't fix. I just love way you put it. I may or may not have carried a coked out girlfriend and a large amount of drugs out of my boss's house, CEO of a very large company, while she was covered in puke and see so his wife wouldn't catch him as she arrived home from her sister's house a day early. Full story, my old boss regularly cheated on his wife with any number of women. Well, he calls me one day, because we are friends away from work and asks me to come to his apartment ASAP. I drive over there and he's blitzed and this chick is laying naked in her own vomit, maybe his too, mumbling about something. He says he has to shower and clean the vomit up because his wife is 10 minutes away so please get that sea out of here. I grab the girl and help her to her feet and cover her up with a shirt. As I'm walking her out he yells for me to grab the party bag. The only bag is a dop kit. I grab it, jump in my car and drive off. This chick is blasted. She doesn't know where she lives and is sure she's having a heart attack. So I calm her down somewhat and reach in her purse and find her id. Luckily she has her current address on it and I take her home. I drive back to my house and pull into the driveway and remember the dop kit. I open it up and there's a sugar cube sized piece of M. 3. Aprox. Grams of kind bud. And what has to be an 8 ball of C. Someone who isn't me smoked the bud but sold. At way below market value, the M and the C. I got a steak dinner and a few beers later that week from the boss. Needless to say, I no longer work there. People who were poor and married rich. What were some startling differences in social situations you had to learn to deal with? I'm dating a girl whose family makes a lot more money than mine. One thing I've noticed is how going out to eat works. With my family, you get an entree and that's pretty much it. We're not poor or anything but you get what you need and you're full at the end of it. With my girlfriend's family, they get the works. A few appetizers. They always ask me if I want something to drink, even if it's like a $12 bourbon. And then of course you get dessert at the end. I love eating out with my girlfriend's family. You are gonna get so fat, but happy. I never married but dated a guy for 5 years who had a very well paying job, nice house, 
nice vehicle, no debt, etc. I'd say the biggest difference was if you needed something, you just went and got it, no planning or saving needed, wanted to eat out every day of the week, why not, want to go on a trip to the other side of the world next week, sure, I've met a lot of really rich people through business now and the common ground between working rich and private jet rich seems to be that none of them think they're rich, and they all say they're comfortable lol. I've met a lot of really rich people through business now and the common ground between working rich and private jet rich seems to be that none of them think they're rich, and they all say they're comfortable lol, unless they were born into a poor family and made it to their position via hard work and or luck, very few people truly appreciate how well off they are at that point. Not married but I still can't get used to all the waste, don't want to finish your food, toss it, stain on a shirt, toss it. Small chip on the vase, toss it, scratch on the screen, toss it. I come from a poor family where my mom brought home almost spoiled fruit from the grocery store she worked at to feed us. So this is a very foreign concept to me. Agree. Married into money and my wife's family refuses to eat leftovers so any extra food whether it's from a restaurant or Thanksgiving goes home with me instead of in the trash. Bigger emphasis on the value of mental health. When I went through a depression, I got much more support from my family in law because therapy and self care was a luxury they could afford. I love my parents, but when you spend your life struggling to make ends meet the attitude is basically, suck it up, there are bigger problems, it's not all about you. Disclaimer, I did not grow up poor, percent, but my family was incredibly frugal, we had a good life. And we were never in need of anything. My husband's family is very well off. And the culture shock of being part of the family hasn't worn off yet. They're extremely generous and kind people. For which I'm grateful. I just feel so awkward talking about money or spending it around them. It's even awkward discussing it here because I feel like I should be thankful and not overanalyze it. As someone already said, eating out is wildly different. My parents packed us sandwiches and cereal bars on vacations and then we mar bait out for dinner. Restaurants were for birthdays only other than that. My husband's family orders appetizers, expensive entrees, desserts, drinks, everything. And his father picks up the tab every time for all of us. I tried to pick up the tip early on and got laughed out of the room. Christmases and birthdays are wildly uncomfortable for me. My family gives one or two gifts to each person, and often the gifts are sometimes handmade. Store-bought cards are considered a waste of money. There's a lot of thought put into each gift or homemade card. His family spends an inordinate amount on piles, actual piles, of presents and multiple cards. Christmas takes hours. I remember crying the first year my husband and I were together because I felt simultaneously thankful and somehow guilty for accepting so much from them. I never got an allowance or spending money growing up. My father-in-law now sneaks spending money into my purse or my husband's wallet about half of the time we see him just because. We're both making decent money and don't need it. Out to a movie? Here's money for popcorn and drinks. Going on vacation? Go do something fun. Summer? Go buy some summer clothes. It's bizarre, even after 5 years. Tried to pick up the tip early on and got laughed out of the room. Once you're filthy rich, money makes more money just sitting there. It would be foolish to spend hard earned money on such things. Don't worry about it. Enjoy it. Take advantage of it. Maybe do some good with it. Didn't marry him. But X's family was comfortably wealthy. One of many surprising things was the way they ate ribs. I was raised to use my hands to hold the ribs and just go to town. But his family cut the meat off each rib and ate it with a fork and knife. No hand to meat touching. I felt like such a barbarian lol. That sounds so time consuming. When I feel fancy I'll pick up the ribs with bits of napkin. Like when I'm out with people. But getting cutlery involved seems excessive for a dang rib. Money versus time. I'm from an upper middle class family. My wife's family were in a pretty unstable financial situation when her dad died in her mid-teens. After his business collapsed. The major difference is that I'm willing to trade money for time. My wife wants to go to a baby item sale where she can get, say, a set of bottles plus sterilizer for 50% off. 
$150 instead of $300 for the set. My standpoint is that rather than spending an entire Saturday morning getting the stuff and queuing for hours, I would much rather she pay the extra and we have our time free. I know it's an extravagance, but it's one I'm fortunate enough to be able to afford if it means that my heavily pregnant wife and I don't need to stand in a queue for hours. My standpoint is that I value my time. This gets her extremely agitated though. On the 14th of March, a local pizzeria had a promotion where you got a personal pizza for $3.14. The line out the door of the place that day was scary. Keep in mind that these pizzas were normally $7.99. Social interactions with people I converse with. I didn't marry rich but came upon a position in my field that gave me a huge boost in quality of life than what I had growing up. I don't know if it's just my experience but I notice the facade and overall fake persona people have in my rich social circle, fellow co-workers, friends of friends, than the people I grew up with that have a tell it like it is but not in a rude disrespectful way type. I feel I can never speak about how I really feel or just shoot the crap comfortably with the more rich peers. It's more like I'm a political diplomat that has to keep a perfect image. Okay well now I'm just curious what you do. Not poor or married but in an upper class university on a scholarship. How easy it is for people to just spend money. I recently purchased a laptop after months of research. Looking up articles for rumors about future releases. Watching the trends of the currently inflated RAM and graphics cards. Buying it from America online and shipping it here 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 Friend here decides he wants a MacBook at 9 o'clock as it's in his possession by 12.30. Not trying to bash anyone here, but left me speechless for a moment. There's a teamwork mentality when you are poor, growing up or even before the rich life. I'd hear my mom ask my grandparents can you front me $100 until I get paid Friday, and everyone would pitch in so we wouldn't be hungry. Life was simpler and you'd get excited over little things like everyone getting together for a barbecue and having enough for everyone to eat. Sure there was the stress of bills and all of that, but I always felt we were all in it together. Like everyone accepted everyone for who they were and none of us had much, so that's just the way it was. I got super excited on Saturdays when my mom told us we'd go garage sale shopping. This was a really big deal. These days my world is full of people who put a lot of emphasis on labels and who wears what. But at my core, I'm still the girl who appreciates anything new. I don't care how much money I have, I will never spend crazy amounts on clothes. In the rich life, there's more secrecy or the hesitation to be vulnerable. There's more emphasis on labels and vacations and who drives what. Versus growing up when the whole family stopped to see my mom's brand new car that really had 150k miles on it. There's an expectancy of having the best and that's why the rich often want more, more, more. With children, I feel like there's a separation BC everyone has big rooms and cell phones and the best video games and live a fast paced life to remain stimulated. Versus in my poor childhood days, we'd all gather around the Sega Genesis the entire day waiting for our one turn. Then we'd eat the same meal and watch TV together and all pile in the room together. Just things like that. Till I miss the poor life. My so comes from a family that's wealthier than mine. I was shocked by how they all just expect the father to take care of them. My so and his siblings live in homes their father pays for even though they are adults. His mother does not work. Even if the father is not there, they happily use his money to pay for dinners, gas, etc. In return. He treats them all like children. If I go to see my mother, then I try to carry my weight, help out around the house, pay for stuff we do eat, cook for her. Just a warning, your so and siblings are the kind of people who have a good chance of losing it all after the parent passes away, statistically speaking. How powerful their whole social circle is. My boyfriend's family is very rich and it's just amazing how in every family get together everyone is the owner of two or three major companies, has worked in the government at some point etc. I do appreciate that they are self aware and know they have everything. His cousin recently graduated college and her aunt said something along the lines of even though you have your life resolved and will never need anything, it is important to receive proper education to be a good citizen. Her aunt sounds like an amazing person for trying to distill these values. My wife was the poor one in the relationship. 
What amazes me is everyone being so insistent on splitting bills and finding parity. At the end of a vacation, her family or friends pull receipts out of every pocket and the split is figured down to the penny so everyone paid the same amount for the vacation. I tossed all my receipts the first year and they expected me to show them my bank statement so they could see all of my spending from the trip. The accommodations are split based on income with her family and per bed with her friends. So I really get screwed with the former, my wife told them my income against my wishes. In my family, the person extending the invitation pays all expenses for all invitees once they arrive at the destination. Accommodations, meals, entertainment, etc. I've never heard of anyone, poor or rich, splitting a bill based on your income. That's incredibly bizarre and sounds like they made it up just to take advantage of you. I'm not rich, but I've seen the promised land. I've definitely been poor. The transition and or contrast between older, poorer, friends and newer, richer, acquaintances can be managed if you choose intelligent. Friends who aren't insecure or wrapped up in being self-conscious and acquaintances who aren't judgmental and self-absorbed. IMHO social class is different from economic class. One main difference I have noticed are the length, frequency, and use of free time. The well-off travel internationally regularly or semi-regularly, and tend to travel domestically regularly, even if it is for work. Budgeting is a crucial life skill when you're poor and more an option for exercising mental self-discipline when one is flush with disposable income. When you're poor you have to trudge needs. Food is the easiest thing to spend less on or forego in the name of saving up money for a repair, item, or necessary service. Learning how to do things yourself. Time can sometimes be a substitute for money. Thank god for YouTube can also keep irregular expenses lower. Among some of the skills I picked up were how to solder, mod a PS2, recover a bar box pool table, repair a motorcycle, etc. Needs are determined by how quickly or slowly they will affect your health, way of life and financial viability. Choosing a routine that doesn't leave you broke before the end of every pay period is very important. When you're well off once replace needs and are prioritized by amount of desire and level of convenience. If you somehow overspend here and there, definitely possible with lifestyle inflation then it's relatively easy to coast off of savings. Of the fluff of that lifestyle, spare food, spare car with gas, spare cash in a jacket pocket, spare credit, etc. For days or weeks or even months without having to change your routine much. Oh, and the people you hang out with change. Changes in lifestyle make it more of an obstacle to spend time with people of a different economic class. The places you live become different. The food you eat can become different. Heck even the work schedule and flexibility of the schedule changes. I'm not married yet, but I grew up poor. My family had fallen on hard times and we were on food stamps. The free lunch program disability as my dad lost his ability to work, Medicaid, you name it and my mom had tried to get assistance. We still barely had enough to get by. I got a job at 12 and sometimes had to pay the rent. When I was moving to college, the landlord was threatening eviction because they couldn't pay the rent. We lived in a moderately middle class area with lots of conflicting class feelings. My fiancé comes from an upper middle class family, never had to worry about money. They aren't like stupid rich but they always had more than enough to get by. There's two things I can think of right now that haven't been said to death on the thread. When she needs clothes, she just goes out and buys the clothes she needs. Her mom's idea of a good vacation idea is visiting the mall, and maybe growing up chubby and poor. But I hate buying clothes I hate spending money on them and I hate throwing away old clothes. I literally make her put old clothes that can't be saved in the trash for me. When something is wrong with her car, she gets it fixed. If a warning light goes on, she gets it checked out and is riddled with anxiety until it's fixed. I went home for a bit and my sister was driving us around in the family car and had to double check with my other sister how many warning lights were supposed to be on. Also my fiancé always fills the gas tank all the way instead of just putting $10 or $20 in until you can put another $10 or $20 in. I even have my own steady income where I'm getting by and not scraping by. And it's so weird just to get things when you need them. This was longer than I anticipated it being. Whoops. Not married, yet, but my partner's family is wealthy. What's insane to me is that they don't realize how wealthy they are. 
they go to Europe once a year, their home is worth over a million, etc. But they used to be much more wealthy and lost a lot in the housing market crash, so to them, they are not rich. Meanwhile my family was briefly homeless and my mom has always worked multiple jobs, she teaches college students. I paid my way through college and took out loans for anything not covered by scholarships or work money. My partner's family paid for her school, and now for her siblings too. They're extremely kind and generous people, but I still think they can't quite see just how privileged they are. I grew up with welfare and food stamp. As a teenager my parents worked but were very frugal. I wore the same clothes throughout the year and didn't get anything new until the next school year. When I started working and had my own money I only shopped at affordable and used clothing stores. When I married my very wealthy husband I was thrown into a world where you wore new, brand name, clothes every day, rarely wore anything twice. It took me a long time to get adjusted to buying a dress that was more than $50 lol, or shoes too. Now I don on clothes that can be worth someone's rent payment on a daily basis. I still wear clothes that are affordable when I go back to visit my family bc some people have a hard time paying attention to anything else but the price tags. On a personal note, I love inviting people to go out and have a good time dining at the more higher end restaurants. I could never did that when I was working at my minimum job and ngl I love paying the bills now. It's my favorite thing to do since I know my friend's siblings can't afford to go to those places. I suppose on the flip side if you're just wearing things once, you now get to be on the other end of the used clothing store donation chain. Maybe there are frugal teenagers out there who will wear your stuff for years and then patch it up and wear it for years more. I grew up poor with wealthy, billionaire, family. They're really wonderful. The main thing that bugs me is that they just don't see a lot of the service people in their lives in the same way I do. I don't mean the people they're close to because they support anyone who works for them all the time like their family. But stuff like cutting the line or doing weird stuff in stores that makes clerks uncomfortable or sending food back when it was fine. Once, there was someone coming to swap out a rug for example, and they just like left the dude standing there for 5 minutes because they were in the middle of something. I just can't imagine doing that because I've been there, not necessarily with a rug, but I've been in a position where my work and time aren't really valued. Like I said, they're really great and do a ton of charity work and are the best kind of rich people, but it's a weird little thing I've noticed. Having worked in the food industry, as I imagine most in their 20s have, I can efficiently say that I hate people that make a fuss over perfectly fine food. The food they return has to be thrown away and is a waste of everyone's time and the business's money. Blah. Going to sit down on chain restaurants when we go out instead of getting fast food, the fake niceties when talking to other people in that social circle, not cussing or being overly enthusiastic when talking, not discussing things I did because I was poor it makes people uncomfortable, the value that is put on looks I'd rather be part of the guys discussions that revolve around business politics etc. Weird, in my social circle, it's the women who talk politics, work, etc. The guys talk sports and discuss barbecue techniques. I was on the opposite end of this apparently. I had recently bought a nice house in the 100k range and in showing around my fiancé's parents I called it to start a home with lots to work on. This caused a rather large verbal attack from her stepfather about how I have no respect for their family. They have owned their home for 25 years and no more on the loan than the value of the home due to illegal activities, bankruptcy, and it being a generally crappy home. I have since learned that anything related to finances, value, or work is just plain off limits to discuss. On a positive note I jump started my in-laws midlife crisis. That just sounds like your in-law is in butthole. Not as extreme as poor to rich but I grew up lower class and my wife grew up middle class. 
Her father made more than both of my parents combined. Her mom was a campaign manager for local politicians. They had a nice medium sized house they built themselves. Took family vacations. She always wore name brand clothes, etc. Compared to my family which never bought anything name brand. Or rarely even knew. I think we may have went on one family vacation. Almost never had any form of professional medical care, and simply never bought anything that was a necessity. It took me a while to grasp the concept that every action doesn't have to revolve around working and saving money. Vacations were also very foreign to me for a while and I used to get really irritable going on them at first cause the idea of not working and then spending money in a manner that I deemed frivolous was mind boggling. Didn't get married into money but adopted into money. Long story if you want to hear it comment. Going from not having running water and having to steal food from Walmart to living in a mansion out in the country with all the chicken fry I could ever eat and people that actually cared for me. It kinda just made me think dang I am super lucky while my hood friends are still not doing well. Interested. I have read a adoption trend in Japan, where elders with no children adopt 20 somethings so as to pass on a business. No idea how prevalent it is. Ug my girlfriend and her real people bread. The other day, we decided we wanted some grilled cheeses, but I was out of bread. So, we go to the store and I go down the bread tortilla bagels aisle. I started to grab a bag of my fav bread when she stopped me and totally 100% seriously asked if the grocery store had any real people bread. I could tell she didn't mean any harm by it, but it just struck me how she had no idea that 99% of people use this bread for literally everything. It hadn't even occurred to me that Americans would make goddamn grilled cheese any differently. After a brief trip to the bakery, and a loaf of his posh but sourdough, we made the best grilled cheese I've ever had. That being said, my butt is never spending that much on bread again unless she's paying. Wait I'm American and don't know what real people bread is. Also to change your life when making a grilled cheese lightly coat the bread in mayonnaise and you'll get a perfect toast every time. I work in a very nice kitchen. I would consider myself to have been lower middle class while growing up. The thing that gets me about places like the one I work at, is the presentation of food. Personally, I couldn't care less about how my food looks. I want it to be easy to eat, and taste good. Also, our customers will pay out the butt for food. I understand that the product we receive prep send out is better than what most people will ever eat. But to pay as much as we charge for it, in the past week, I've had octopus, wajai tenderloin, and prime rib of which I brought a bit to my dad for father's day, which were all pretty dang good, but I'm not going to go it and order any of that for myself. I could be spending my money on more useful things. When I went to my expensive, private college from my hometown in Appalachia, a few things stunned me and the people I ended up dating. I did end up marrying a woman much more wealthy than me, but not quite as extreme. 1. They know how to pronounce a lot of stuff I had only ever read. Don Quixote. I guess Don Kick Socks. Can. My guess. Can Nez. Heck. Even Foyer. My guess. Foyer. They get to hear it in their environment and don't have to guess at it, like I did in parentheses. 2. They lack some color in their language. I had no idea the name for a Brazil nut because I had only ever heard my grandpa call them a delightfully racist term. Also, apparently the term is jury rig not your choice of two racist alternatives. I stepped in crap a few times there. 3. They order appetizers at restaurants and dessert, which still feels extravagant. Okay so I do not fit this strata. However I think my story kinda applies. Okay so I dated a fairly rich girl. Her family was great. She was great. Any preconception you have should be removed. However, they were very sheltered. I was hanging out in her family's lounge. Talking to her musically inclined uncle about prog rock. He had never heard about Rush and I just couldn't freaking understand it. This got to me talking about townies aka a person who never leaves their hometown. And hates those who does. All the lifers in my hometown know Rush. It's a given. Yet to her uncle a townie was a person from the town school for boys. So here I am. As a man says oh. No. I'm not a. Um. Townie. I went to. Insert competitor here. So. TL. DR. I got to show exactly how low class I was to my ex's family by using a slang they didn't understand. 
Not married, but going to visit my Swedish boyfriend's parents always kinda blows my mind. They're not even remotely rich, they're middle class. I'm British and I grew up in rough neighborhoods. We lived very frugally to say the least. Council housing. Crime up the wazoo. My mum burned through all her credit cards merely to raise me, etc. I grew up well and my mum brought me up well. I'm very polite, classy and well mannered. I always kinda expected to live a lower working class lifestyle all the same. Tinned food, all that jazz. I also had the internet, and that was how I met my current boyfriend who I now live with. Going to Sweden to visit him for the first time just blew my mind. Sweden blew my mind. His parents lived in a beautiful detached home with a huge garden and balcony and all the trimmings. Multiple bathrooms. I was like this is a freaking palace and I couldn't believe it. So yeah I guess there was a wealth disparity there. He still teases me about my council diet. Sometimes I like beans on toast or fish finger sandwiches. So what? But we have reached a decent equilibrium and I always pay my half in rent bills. I just know that if I ever do end up moving to Sweden with him I'm in for a culture shock of my life. The lap of luxury. That is. The normal life of an average Swede. I'll be craving my fried fish fingers and baked beans on toast. But all I'll get is smoked salmon or some other luxury food I'm not used to. Haha. <laughs> I think everyone goes back to their childhood favorites no matter what. I've become a pretty decent cook and love making different somewhat fancy dishes. I also make cheeseburgers with boxed macaroni and cheese, or baked beans and breakfast sausage, or hamburger helper. It's what I grew up with. I dated a wealthier girl for a while. Most of the weirdness has been said but I want to add how they actually socialized with their friends. They hosted dinner parties very often. They had a tight-knit friend group they got to see all the time because they all were able to have weekends off and could afford to feed a ton of people. My family would host the kids' friends at best, and parties only on birthdays. I remember my mom didn't have anybody to hang with for quite some time, and even today she really doesn't invite people over to just chill. Where do I begin? Controlled over money. Not allowed to discuss our finances because what do you know? Etc. I had my ex say that I needed to stop talking as if $10,000 is a lot of money. So much more. That sounds horribly toxic. Good to see that's an ex. What's the richest thing someone has done in front of you? I went to my boss wedding. The whole thing was just so dang decadent. There were over 1000 ppl. A big butt film crane. High budget Bollywood music videos produced of the bride and groom driving luxury cars. Multiple wedding cakes etc. What made me pause though, was when freaking 5 $10 bills started raining from the sky and the guests danced on them. The bills were American. I'm in Canada. 2. I tried to be low key and grab some, but my GF said it'd look bad as everyone else, sporting expensive looking suits and saris, were ignoring them. Understandably, I was a cheese when I asked for a raise soon after and I was told the company wasn't making enough to justify what I wanted. Of course not, the company had to pay for the wedding. I had just turned 17 a few days prior and had some money saved to buy a piece of crap car for $2k. It's all I could afford to buy myself at the time and I did not want any financial help from my family. After driving it for 10 miles, smoke started to pour out of the hood and the temperature of the car was in the red zone. I let the car cool down, drove another 5 miles, and it happened again. I called my mom and dad for help to no avail, so then I called my grandma, also known as Noni. Well, Noni flipped a crap that I wasn't given a safer better car from my parents, so she picked me up, gave me the keys to her 2001 Mercedes E320, and had me drive her to the Mercedes dealership where she then bought and 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 bought this all happened within an hour. I remember thinking at the time dang. I hope I can be rich enough one day to buy a brand new Mercedes on the spot. Richest thing I ever saw. Love you Noni. Buy a brand new $60,000 BMW without hesitation. He was a Saudi dude I was tutoring in English and he needed a car. So he just bought one with the same attitude that one would have when buying a gas station sandwich. People with that kind of money are just living in another reality. Saudi guy I know from university got something like $200,000 a month from his family. Unbelievable wealth in that country. 
so one of my bull's jobs in college was doing door-to-door -door pamphlet bombing and collecting donations for environmental initiatives in the SF Bay Area. Normally, it's all volunteer stuff, but this time they were hiring people as it was an election year. Normally, it's a goal of $30.50 per day for each person. This girl, who had done this for a year, partnered with me and she was just such a nice girl but no one was donating despite her charm. I did a few and fared no better. Finally, I knocked on a door and a dude comes out. I did the script kind of half acid mainly because I was impressed by his sound system in his living room that I had peaked. He showed it off to us, offered us a drink and went off to get his checkbook. He comes back with his wife and she was like oh, let me get my checkbook too. The guy asked us what we normally get per week for this and the girl I was with told him on a good week, around $200-250. The guy makes a face and was like nah, that can't be right, and hands us a check for $5,000. Then his wife shows up and was like you did 5, I'll do 6 and gave us another check but for $6,000. We were speechless and my partner started to cry. The guy also asked us to give him a call by the end of the week so he can follow up with our efforts. I found out later that he was a retired music producer who was super loaded but lived in a normal looking house outside of Oakland. Crazy stuff. Somehow this cracked me up. Wholesome couple trying to one up each other. My brother is fairly wealthy, not like super rich or anything, but he makes way more money than anyone else in the family. He buys new stuff all the time. Like. He'll replace all the TVs in his house every year or two. They still work perfectly, but there's a new one out that's slightly better and it's apparently enough to get him to buy 4 or 5 TVs. Most of the nice stuff I own is just stuff he gave me after he'd had it for a couple years. I saw someone crash a Lamborghini and 10 minutes later a driver showed up with a Ferrari and Buddy drove off while his driver waited for the tow truck. How rich do you have to be to have someone on call to bring you a new luxury car when you're in an accident? GTA Online doesn't count. A long time ago, I worked at as security at a casino. I remember once watching a man bet $15k, $3.5k chips, a hand at blackjack and lose literally every hand without any reaction whatsoever. He probably lost $60k in the 5 minutes I sat watching him. Also, there used to be an elderly guy who would come in and have the entire section of the high roller slot machines reserved for himself. He'd spend 10 or 12 hours going down each row pulling handles at between $100 and $500 a spin. He would usually give advance notice that he was coming and there would be servers and attendants specifically assigned to him while he was there. This always humbled me when I think I have some money. There's always someone in Vegas dropping your entire yearly salary on a hand of blackjack. Unless you're in the 1%. Delivered a pizza to a hotel. Dude was super drunk and had a bottle of expensive scotch almost finished. Bribed me like $20 every 10 minutes to keep talking to him by literally throwing money onto a chair every few minutes. Let me try to his 15k Rolex and offered me the keys to his classic car for free. Dude was boasting the whole time about owning an oil company too. Turns out he wasn't lying when I looked him up. Still didn't want to risk a millionaire sending lawyers after me when he sobers up and realizes he gave away his car while drunk. Sounds like he's depressed rich. My girlfriend had planned on taking me out for an expensive steak dinner for my birthday one year. This dinner included her, her father, her brother, and myself. She had intended on paying for me and letting her family who was visiting from out of town pay for themselves. The thing was though, this was not just an outback steakhouse or whatever. No, this was a full blown 5 star restaurant, with all the trappings, and my country bumpkin redneck butt felt very out of place. Much to her protest though, her father ended up paying for the whole thing. All of us, he insisted, several hundreds of dollars, and a 200, tip and he just nonchalantly paid it like no big deal. And incidentally, I had just met the man for the first time a few days prior. I had the best steak I've ever eaten. My first glass of champagne, dessert, the band played happy birthday, I got a hug from the owner, and all the servers waited on us like they were butlers. I'd never felt so honored. I remember before we left, her father looked me right in the eyes and said, very calmly and firmly with a smile from across the table, Happy birthday, sad sheepherder. I heard what he said, but what I think he meant was, 
take good care of my daughter, in that dad kind of way, or I'm just paranoid. Either way, I was humbled by him paying for all that. I feel shameful just for paying 10 bucks at the Chinese buffet once a week with my coworker. Solved a minor inconvenience by buying a truck. I was loading my car after a Home Depot trip and a few spots over was a couple who just bought several large bags of mulch. Well they couldn't fit all their mulch in their E-Class Mercedes so the wife told the husband to go to the car dealership across the street and buy a truck. And that's exactly what the husband did. He walked across the street to a Toyota dealership and bought the first used truck he saw to move the mulch. When I was a kid, around 1975 if I recall correctly, we went on vacation to Florida. My dad's boss was rich, and let us stay in one of his condos in Vero Beach. The place was sick, shag carpeting everywhere again, 1970s, and one of the closets was so big we turned it into a bedroom for one of us kids. He let us use his boat to go fishing. It was the most awesome thing we'd seen, or so we thought. Then we went to his home. It was nearby, somewhere around Sebastian, I think. It was on a private island. We had to have an access card to get through the back gate. Again, 1975. This was some science fiction crap back then. Anyway, we get to the house. And there's shades of shag carpeting we hadn't even dreamed of. Huge windows that looked out on this impossibly green lawn sort of thing. I had no idea what golf was then, but that's what it was. Dude's house backed up to a golf course. A private golf course. On the way through the house we came across this television set that had this weird bunch of numbers running across the screen. It was a stock ticker. Dude had cable TV and a business channel before anyone had anything more than 3 channels. So we had some snacks, some fresca, fresca was mind blowing to 10 year old me, and went out on the golf course. There was this little river that ran between his property and the one behind his, and he stood there on the green, cigar in hand, and told us about the funniest thing he'd ever seen. A gator again, Florida, had gotten into the river, and his neighbor lady came out of her house curlers in her hair, broom in her hand, yelled at the gator and tried to shoo it off the property, almost right on cue, she came out, and waved, he waved back, and laughed, that's the richest thing I ever saw, I love this memory, especially the shag, it was everywhere luxurious back then, my grandma had it in burnt orange, refurnish an entire house with brand new, expensive designer furniture, and toss out the old designer furniture on the curb like it was broken down junk. Couches, beds, wardrobes, you name it. The old furniture was only a year old. They'd purchase it all brand new the year before. When I worked as a computer tech I went out to a house call. I arrived and realized it should have been called an estate call. The place was senselessly large. I go to this guy's office to look at his computer and I needed a pen for something. He opened his desk drawer and asks me if guns made me uncomfortable because he had one in that same drawer. I respond that I think guns are cool. Mild exaggeration. He proceeds to take me to his gun safe. I'd like this 9x9x9 bank vault. So many guns it was insane. I was obviously impressed. He said oh you like this stuff? Check out my gun room. I tag along more curious than interested. Then I see a room that dwarfs any other I've seen in a residential building. There were guns like you wouldn't believe. 50 calories mounted machine guns. Small cannons. Like every small arm from the civil war to modern time. Even as a gun novice I knew enough to be impressed. Crap was crazy. When I worked as a computer tech I went out to a house call. Those are unforgettable. Yeah. My wife has a virus on her laptop at home. A driver should arrive at your shop in a few minutes. He'll drive you to our house and bring you wherever you want afterwards. I swear it had the effect of throwing a flashbang into my brain. When I was in junior high, a kid I'll call Joe the 4th moved in around the corner from me, and we got to be friends. His parents were divorced, and he lived with his mom, but had regular visits with his dad. What I didn't realize at the time was that the fact that his last name was plastered all over the city on auditoriums, hospital wings, university buildings, etc. wasn't a coincidence. One day Joe the 4th invited me to go to his dad's house for dinner. 
His dad lived in a fairly large old Victorian house in a rather upscale area. This was the kind of house that had dumb waiters and secret passages. It was pretty fun to explore, but I really didn't think much of it. We had dinner, and afterwards, his dad decided we needed some entertainment. So, he got on the phone, and around 15 minutes later, a Spanish guitarist and a flamenco dancer show up and put on a show for us. I realize that's not as showy or ostentatious as casually tossing handfuls of money to a waiter or valet, or things of that nature. However, the idea that he would casually drop hundreds of dollars for a private show just on a whim illustrates just how little money really meant to him. His dad was very laid back. He usually drove an old pickup, and always wore jeans and cowboy boots, and usually a flannel work shirt. To look at him, you'd never guess how wealthy he was. Moral of the story, be nice to people. When I was looking for student accommodation and renting my first flat house share my partner of the time phoned her dad. Hey dad there aren't any nice ones in the area I like can you still buy that house we were looking at the other day. I knew they were rich but thought she was taking the pee. A few weeks later after staying in a hotel she moved into her first home. With all of those legally binding Instagram posts hard work pays off finally got my first house. A 2 bed. At 18 in a major city. We have split up since. Obviously. There was a cool perk through. I worked for her family at this point and they gave me paid holiday and then paid for me to go on holiday. Turned on their kitchen floor. It was a little cold, so they turned on their heated kitchen floor. I know it's not like buying a new house on whim money or replacing a crashed Lambo money they probably aren't even all that expensive to install. But it was a random luxury I'd never even known existed that was my first glimpse into the other reality the wealthy live in. Today I learned heated kitchen floors exist. I am truly amazed. Don't know if this counts but we were in a pet store visiting a bunny my mum had put a deposit on for my sister. It was too young at this point to be separated from its mother. My sister was petting it and calling it Millie. It's soon to be name. This girl around her age comes over and says that she wants the bunny. Pet keepers say no because we have a deposit. Parents pull out a wad of cash and offer to pay over 5x the price of the actual bunny. Sister is scared because she had liked this bunny from 1 weeks old. Pet keepers say no again and leave. When we come back again, the bunny is missing. Pet keepers tell us that they moved it because the family came back in and tried to take the bunny. They were buttholes. I sold just over $28k in custom wheels and tires for a Ferrari F430. Usually deposit would be $500 for special orders. I asked for a grand because I'd never ordered custom wheels for a client before. I expected to be starting a payment plan for him. Buddy went to his Range Rover, grabbed a black duffel bag, came back and tossed it on the counter like a drug deal. I told him to have a seat while I went to the office to count it. The F430 is one of my favorite cars and the guy and I got along real well. So he promised me I would get to drive it. Then we found out I couldn't work on it or I'd void his warranty. He traded in for a newer McLaren and I still see that silver 430 from time to time and wish that man's dang warranty had been up lol. Should have recited the Magnuson Moss Act, the federal law that requires manufacturers to honor their warranty even if aftermarket parts are installed. Back in high school, a girl I knew was so unhappy with the current car she had. Wrong color. Wrong year. Wrong model according to her. The next day, she got a new car that was more to her liking. A girl I knew in high school said that she had some issues with her family so she took her backpack and booked a flight to Dubai and the furthest place I could go when I was angry with my parents was my bedroom. Was in a small size little bar for breakfast in SF. In comes a guy who orders the same as I did, pancakes with coffee. We finish around the same time and I leave my regular 15% tip. Service and the food wasn't special, but whatever. I'm a European and I know it's their salary basically. But this other guy starts counting his $100 dollar bills. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. He smiles, shuffles them together. Puts his empty cup on top and leaves. His bill was about $20 or something. He paid $1000. I mean I just stayed to witness the reaction from the waitress. She was so happy with this guy leaving an almost $200 tip. I kid. I kid. I did not touch her money. 
She was deliriously happy and started jumping up and down as her colleagues came in wondering what was going on. A rich woman had a flat tire and didn't know how to fix it, so I pull over to help her. When I was done we got talking and whoops she so happened to drop her wallet and it land at my feet. She said keep it. I felt so bad I said no I can't. She insisted. See I get home and do and the wallet. $987 was in there with ungodly amounts of change. This was last month as well at $987 paid off one of my college loans I will be honest I cried a little because of this person. Oh boy. I worked at a burrito place during my uni years. I worked with a guy who did not need to work for money. He came from a very rich family, who was putting him through uni, gave him an allowance, etc, etc. I never figured out why he bothered to work, it wasn't like he loved slinging burritos, and he sure as heck wasn't there to gain life experience or bring joy to people's lives. Anyway, a lot of things about him screamed rich, but here's the two that I still am about. 1. He gets home from a night out, doesn't have his key, siblings aren't answering calls, throws rock through a glass door to gain entry to the house, pays for emergency repair the next morning before parents come home. 2. Night out, we're drunk, we decide to stop by work and say hi to everyone working. He slips and falls face first into a metal chair, chips two front teeth in half, picks up his teeth off the floor, continues with night, goes to the dentist the next day for emergency dental work, wasn't worried at all. I'm glad he did work though, hopefully it teaches him independence and to be kind and polite to workers. Or it was a trust requirement but either way someone made sure he'd function. My wife and I went down to Cabo San Lucas to visit one of our friends who had started dating this rich German guy. They were one of the sponsors of a film festival so we got to hang out and see a few celebs. But what I remember most is one of the after parties at a new hotel that hadn't officially opened up yet. The event was being held outside on hotel grounds and at one point. Rich dude says we should go inside and check it out. We walk up to the door where a young gentleman is standing and when he sees us coming he says I'm sorry, but we are not open to the public at which point. Rich dude says we are not the public and blows by him, pushing open the door. You could see the panic in the kid's eyes and then everyone on the inside scrambles around until the owner comes down the stairs and says uh, insert rich dude's name. So good to see you. My wife and I are just like, yeah we're with him. So freaking surreal. One time after a night out I was in line to grab some pizza at a slice bar. In this place there are always lots of different types of slices you can choose from, usually more than 10. So I'm in line behind this group of about 6 and when we get to the counter one of the guys goes to order for the whole group. He walks up and without even really looking at the slices or putting any thought into it at all he just says give me 6 slices of every type. He said it with such carelessness. Like dropping 300 ish dollar sign on pizza was no big thing at all. Also he wasn't completely hammered or anything. He was completely aware of what he was doing. It was just the complete almost bored mundane way he bought up 60 slices of pizza that screamed he was rich off more than even the dollar sign he spent. He ended up giving a lot of the pizza away to other people in the shop. Since he ordered way more than his group would eat. So that was pretty cool. Trasher example. I worked at a bar restaurant as a host. Spot doubled as a tourist bar during the day and the place for townies to get trashed in the evening. This dude would come in on Sundays and drink Heineken, smoke Newports and play scratch tickets. He looked like a plumber, always wore the same shirt and had basically no teeth. One day he's in with his buddies and he doesn't want to walk to the gas station to buy tickets. He hands me a $100 and asks me to go buy him tickets. Says he'll give me $10 and a percentage of whatever he won if he hit it big. I buy him the tickets. He wins some. Has me take the winnings to buy more tickets for another 10 bucks. The cycle repeats. He gave me $200 bucks to walk a block over and over again. End of the night he wins 5 grand. Gives me $500 off the top. Turns out the man's a millionaire slumlord. And does that every week blowing thousands on scratch cards. Maybe he's trying to go legit. My friend did this before, we go to school overseas in Japan and I won't divulge much of what he does for work in his family business but they're really well off. Anyways right after we started school together I take him out to show him around some areas in Japan. 
He wants to get some high end beef and crap I tell him the price and that I couldn't afford it really. He tells me and another friend that it's no problem and he'd pay for it. We proceeded to eat nearly $1 KUSD in A5 beef and they drank some high end wine while he treated me to some high end say cause I'm not a wine guy. I don't let his wealth get in the way though as I'll try to do little things to pay him back for stuff he does for me. We go to movies a lot so I tend to try and pay for his popcorn and drinks as he often pays for my meals since I'm always ordering and doing the paying for us even on his money. I've posted this before but when I worked at a high end retail store, a guy came in with his two kids who were both around 12-13. I struck up a conversation with him while helping him grab a new set of luggage and he told his kids, go get whatever you need for the next few months, bring it back here to this guy so he can get paid. I don't remember their exact purchase amount but the commission bump on the check was more than my tax return that year. Then when I go to help them take all their things out. The guy announces that he drove his Ferrari convertible so he was gonna have to summon the wicked witch aka call his ex wife to bring the Porsche so that they could haul all their merchandise off. A client of mine went to get a relatively new car serviced. While he was waiting in line to hand off the keys he looked at a brand new Mercedes they had on the floor. When it was his turn he just told the guy behind the counter he'd be taking that new $120 K Merc and they could just service his old car and sell it for him. Poor guy behind the counter was caught completely off guard and thought it was a joke. My client quickly demanded someone who was interested in making a dang sale. 10 minutes later he did get to drive off in the new Merc. Poor bastard wasn't ready for that kind of money. Friend bought a 72 inch TV. This was when 72 inches TVS were just out. His wife hated it. Bought a 52 inch one the next day. Gave the 72 inch TV to his dad. Went to a lounge bar. The owner friend said everything was on him. Nine girls came in to entertain. Was a good night. Strangely the few celeb people I hung around with were the most frugal. Guess when you're that rich you don't have to prove to anyone. Comma strangely the few celeb people I hung around with were the most frugal. Guess when you're that rich you don't have to prove to anyone. I remember seeing Charles Barkley interviewed on Oprah when he wrote his autobiography. And he mentioned the worst thing about going out for the night with Michael Jordan. I think, was that Jordan refuses to tip and it's just embarrassing. Decided to do a shoestring budget backpacking tour in southern India. My budget was like 150 bucks a week. Friend decides to join spontaneously and his dad won't let him stay at a hostel or cheap hotel. He lived on 150 bucks a day. Not the richest thing anyone has ever done but it was fucking awkward for both of us. My sister's friend's family is super rich. She got a brand new BMW X6 MSUV for her birthday. I was out with my sister and her friend to get food and her friend sped out of the parking spot and accidentally backed into a pole while leaving the parking lot while ultimately ripping off the entire rear bumper and didn't even care. She simply said it's fine. My dad can afford to fix it. B. My car cost $26k and I get nervous when I hit a curb but ultimately didn't do any real damage to it. I'd be flipping my crap if I ripped off a bumper in a car of that cost. Sure, a ripped bumper isn't the most expensive repair in the world but that SUV alone cost more than what my parents make per year combined. I went on a deployment to Qatar during the summer of 2011 with the US Air Force. During our day off for the week. A co-worker and I went off base and visited the local mall. It took a few minutes to find an open spot in the parking lot and start walking toward the building. As we're nearing the entrance, a neon orange and black Bugatti pulls into the shaded overhang and a well-dressed kid hops out of the passenger side door. While the kid immediately starts walking into the building in front of us, the driver pops the hood. Storage is in the front for a mid-engine car and starts pulling out those support poles with built in retractable straps that you can hook together to make a queue line. He just ropes off the car exactly where it's parked in the overhang, then follows the kid into the mall. My buddy and I raise our eyebrows, but continue into the mall and enjoy that sweet air conditioning. After walking around for a few minutes, we head towards the food court to grab some ice cream. Lo and behold, the same kid and his driver are in the line in front of us. 
The kid finishes making his order, then pull out his wallet. In the most brazen I'm richer than you fashion, this kid flashes his billfold and takes forever to pull a single 500 ryle note, ratio to the dollar was about 0.25, one at the time, so it's roughly $130, when that's literally what every one of the 20 or so bills in his wallet were, I finish my order, pay, and start enjoying a waffle cone, that's when I see the kid pitch his ice cream, with like 90% of the cone remaining, straight into the trash. Must be lovely to have your personal driver haul you to the local mall, then take longer to park the car than what you spent attempting to eat ice cream. Rich Gulf Arabs are absolutely intolerable. If you were filthy rich, what's a totally unnecessary but cool and outrageously eccentric thing you would buy? Hire a crazy architect to build a mansion with a stupid amount secret passages and puzzles gating off huge parts of the house and never tell me about them, so I keep finding new rooms and puzzles and dungeons and shortcuts all the time. Resident Evil Mansion. You want a Resident Evil Mansion. A massive glass greenhouse as a connected room in my house. Give it a Victorian gentleman explorer kind of vibe. Big exotic plants and trees everywhere. Scattered birds and small fauna. And a small pond in the center. Also, a small cottage for my silent and dedicated gardener to live on site in. Instead of a koi fish pond, I would want an axolotl pond, complete with walkways, bridges and cherry trees to see these cute funny guys. I don't think it would be a good idea to get a pond full of axolotls, considering they go through a cannibalistic stage. One of those giant royal paintings of myself to put over a fireplace, just me wearing a crown, wearing a cloak, on a throne with my dog next to me. It's so insane and ridiculous but I'd love it because of how funny it'd be. They're only like $300 online. They do oil paintings lol. Okay so I'd have a mansion, of course, but a 10 year old's version of a mansion. I'm talking water slides to go straight from my room to the pool. Fireman poles to go straight to the kitchen. Sushi boats that go to every room and constantly rotate hamburgers, chicken wings, and tacos. Soda fountains everywhere. Secret bookcases and passages that open into arcades and movie theaters. My old boss tied to a wall that I can beat with golf clubs and set on fire. A big trampoline park with a huge ball pit that I can jump into. A little indoor park where all my dogs can run and play in. Huge board game tables that I can invite all my friends to play at. A library with cases full of games and movies. One of these things is not like the others. I want to build a house that is specifically designed for it to be really easy to run cable through to every room. So I can update with whatever is current, and have hardline connections to everything. And I want a closed off network and lots of home baked smart house like things that don't involve internet. So I can have convenience and privacy, and probably a cat castle playroom thing. Because there's no way my fiancé would move into my weird dream house if I didn't also think about her. Army of lawn gnomes. But thousands of lawn gnomes and put them in my yard. Hire someone at night to slowly have them invade my neighbor's yard over the course of a year. My friend told me the other day that when he becomes rich he's gonna immediately buy a massive bathtub in the middle of his bathroom that's shaped like a giant clamshell. This. I don't understand why the standard bathtub isn't large enough for the standard height adult person. I want mine 8 feet x 4 feet with 2 shower heads so there's no dead zones. I'd probably pull stunts like the rich dude in rat race. Offer lots of money as prizes for people to do crazy things just so I can look on an amusement. Bookshelf that spins around when you pull on a specific book, but instead of revealing a cool bat cave type of thing, it's just a laundry room. Can you imagine trying to pull the book while holding a laundry basket though? R.I.P. my dude. I would love an automated front gate. When I drive down my drive, water fountains would shoot over my car in an arch like them from Roller Coaster Tycoon. What a welcome home. I'd go all out and get the Jurassic Park gates. A machine that lets me out my pants on both legs at the same time. That way when people say something about my wealth and how we all put our pants on one leg at a time, I can say, well, not exactly. Of all the brilliant ideas in this thread, 
This one is my absolute favorite. It's truly the last vestige of poverty the rich folk have to deal with. I'm assuming that eventually some submental trust fund fool would misuse the machine and accidentally castrate himself. Then, we'd all get a nice laugh. I'd build my own cinema so I can have the perfect cinema experience for every single movie. That would include the best snacks mankind has ever made and I would occasionally open it for other people for free. I did that, even though I'm not filthy rich. It ended up costing about $4,500 for the projector, screen, speakers and wiring to do and the results were magnificent. D. 10 stroke 10 would recommend. Outrageously expensive, my own maker space, but on steroids. Massive 5 axis mills, automated lathes, ridiculously sized 3D printers, induction furnaces, kilns, anvils, grinders, water jet cutters, plotter printers, screen printers, paint booth, vacuum stations, table saws, routers, etc. Just bat crap crazy levels of manufacturing capacity, for me. I'd hold a contest where people who live in really bad holes could submit their horror story and I'd choose a winner where I'd buy their house and then proceed to do absolutely everything I could to violate their horror rules. Grass needs to be 2 inches, mine's gonna be 3, house can't be pink, I'm painting that bee, no lawn ornaments, pink flamingos for days. Hovercraft, I'm too rich to have a bumpy ride, frick potholes, that's what poor people taxes fix. I want to float, everywhere e, even across water, like Jesus. An island in international waters where I can found my own country, just enough to sustain 10k people, including visitors. It would be a mixture between tourism and scientific development, basically a benevolent Bond villain. A couple folks already tried stunts like these, I hope you have the budget for a paramilitary. I've thought about this. I love my house, it's a quaint medium sized 60 year old home, old enough to be made of good materials like copper wiring and actual wood, edit, not OSB, but not old enough that it's falling apart, if I suddenly struck it rich I'd have hard time leaving my home, don't think I could raise it and build a big home on the lot, wouldn't keep with the neighborhood aesthetic, instead I'd buy the house next door and the house directly behind. Then I'd excavate the land in between and connect them all with a massive underground basement. It would have all the modern perks. An indoor pool. A games room. I might even renovate the main floor of one of the extra houses into just 3 or 4 massive bedrooms. I'd cover that all back up with earth and grass and gardens and stuff so from the outside it still looked like 3 separate houses. But inside would be my super house. I believe that Jeff Bezos did something similar to this in DC. Three connected houses that appear separate from the outside. I'd pay a Scottish guy gobs of money to just follow me around and echo everything I say. For instance, if I were to say man, I'm thirsty he would yell bring the goods or water or something like that. Because that's funny to me. And he has to be in full kit, with giant bushy red beard, and a furious scowl that belies his heart of gold. Start an aerospace company called Space Y. Eat at Musk. I would have a large room, filled with comfortable surfaces and integrated passive lighting and speakers, optimized for good sound. The surfaces, both floor and walls, would react to the music, via vibration I guess, so that you kind of get moved around. The lighting creates an awesome atmosphere. I would listen to loud music, lying on the floor in there and probably enter heaven. I would buy a Humvee complete with a turret and gun on top, but instead of bullets it would shoot out obnoxious amounts of silly string. Occasionally I would swap it out with spray cheese ammo. I imagine this driving through a parade spraying everyone with food and fun. I've always wanted one of those full body heater blow dryer things that I've seen in a few movies. I could just step out of the shower and stand in front of this massive machine that will probably give me cancer that dries me me in in 2 seconds without the need of a towel. Every now and then I consider taking a shower before bed when I don't need it but the thought of having to do all that work to towel myself off afterward is so off putting. Then I realize what I'm sulking about. I'd go pay for the education of like 100 college grads. 
but I'd let them know it was me, and that there would be a time when I would call in that favor, occasionally call them and check in to let them know I was still watching their career with great interest. You can call them Scott's Tots. I would buy 400 acres in Montana, and I would just start building one, one replicas of spaceships from my favorite TV shows there, I could throw parties in 10 forward, and go to bed in my bunk on serenity, I could wake up, eat in the breakfast nook on the Millennium Falcon, and spend my day playing Rocket League on the bridge of the Rossi, fully strapped in of course, and on warm afternoons in the summer, I'd go for a spin in the Argo conveniently stored in a shuttle bay of the Enterprise E. All of the surroundings of this spaceship parking lot I would keep 100% natural and green. You would only be able to get in by invitation, or if you wanted to use my serenity as a set to film another season of Firefly. I think I would call the place in Isfriedrich, after the Yates poem, because it would be my refuge. Yes hello I'd like to join these parties. If I had an absolutely belligerent amount of money, once every 5 or so years, I'd buy as many local used cars listed under $10,000 until I hit $5 million. For a cool $5 million and change every 5 or so years, I could really impact a lot of people in need or going through rough times. No real set of requirements. Just kinda walk in, tell me your story, lie to me even. And bam, a brand spanking used 2008 Chevy Cobalt with 120,000 miles on it, I'd easily add in an additional million per cycle for mechanical repairs and maintenance updates, it would absolutely wreck the used car market though, so I'd also be a secret super villain. That's only 500 cars, won't wreck the market, you're buying the cars, but you will change 500 plus lives though. I would buy our old mall in our one mall town which is now a dead mall. I would restore it as closely as possible as to what it once looked like in the mid 70s when it first opened. I would try to invite the original stores back in with incentives like free rent for the first 5 years. I, I do the same, but turn it into a paintball arena instead. A whole, multi-ton collection of real, honest to goodness swords, ancient and modern. All comers welcome. The only stipulation would be that the items must be either battle tested in the case of older examples, or forged with proper techniques to ensure that they would not fall apart on impact with a target. In the case of younger items, I would have a large room in my dwelling, perhaps a large cellar or bunker, in which my armory would be located. Just a pissload of swords though man. I am talking no space on the wall, lockers and trunks and footlockers and crates and racks and racks of the bastard things. You would love my so, he makes all kinds of weapons, I have about 25 laying around. A massive aquarium set up, so big I could buy a canoe to move around in it, with various tropical fishes, and a few little islands skated around, with ant colonies in them. Also let's ride this train to hot. A donkey who I would name Ronnie, I'd ride him through town wearing a tuxedo and a viking helmet. I've always wanted to host a giant week long land party on beach shore in California or Florida, rent a giant mansion, hire a chef and maid, fly in all of my friends from across the states give everyone like a $2k rig to game on for the week, then at the end everyone rig gets shipped home with them. It wouldn't be that extravagant for rich people, but for me and my friends I feel it would be pretty great. A giant statue of myself holding a coffee in one hand and a platypus in the other, and pay a city in Australia that shares my name to display it with a fancy plaque. I'd buy a slot for a Super Bowl ad, it wouldn't be advertising anything, it'd just be 30 uninterrupted seconds of myself eating a sandwich against a plain white background. At the tail end of the ad I would just look at the camera and my full name would appear on screen. That's it. Based on this year's Super Bowl ads I'd imagine mine would also be considered the best. 1. Rent a large bus. 2. Go T0 every Home Depot in the area and pick up all the guys looking for work. 3. Take them all to an amusement park. Lunch and dinner too. 4. Pay them 2k each for the day. I'd build a velcro room inside my gothic fantasy castle, it would have every surface padded with velcro, and all kind of obstacles. Outside the door would be my personal velcro butler, that would help me put on the velcro suit when I wanted to crawl around on crap. Also, 
He would have a giant spatula to scrape me off the walls when I got stuck. My velcro room will be freaking glorious. And you're all invited to come play in it. But don't be freaking with my velcro butler. I'd also have an upside down room. Where everything was mounted in the ceiling. And a miniature room built for any dwarf visitors I might get. Everything would be scaled down appropriately. Including the ceiling. So normal sized people would feel as uncomfortable and out of place as people with dwarfism do everywhere else. Also, there would be a dwarf sized bar with a dwarf bartender. And he'd be really rude to normal sized people. Oh, and a mirror room that was furnished like a normal living room. Except walls, floor, and ceiling that were mirrors. Comma also, he would have a giant spatula to scrape me off the walls when I got stuck. This part really sold it for me. I want to buy a crap ton of land and either reforest it or protect it from any kind of development. It could be like a privately owned Yellowstone. Maybe I'd have a little house there, but nothing extravagant that threatened the integrity of the land. The people who wanted to hike on my land would have to sign a binding agreement to take home everything they brought in and also to not harm any animals except in self-defense. And I'd keep track and hire people to double. Check that they actually followed through. If they didn't, they'd have to pay a penalty and they get a lifetime ban from my land. If they killed one of the animals on my property unprovoked, I'd take them to court. Also, I really want to make friends with an elephant. I want to go to an elephant reserve and learn how to take care of the elephants. Come to think of it, a lot of my absurd ideas are animal and nature based. I'd buy all the Gucci and other expensive fashion designer clothes and directly give them away to the homeless and school children. $500 sandals frick you. Homeless wear them. Bedazzled gold glasses yay. My niece has a pair just like them. You are not your freaking car keys. Also, a fleet of a couple thousand drones to do my other mischievous biddings in my personal project mayhem. Yes hello. I would like to apply to be a part of project mayhem. I am a mid tigoon. I can load vans and provide classic crony lines such as good one boss and you tell em boss. I can provide my own outfit but I'm willing to dress in coordinated outfits. Just no spandex. Must provide brass knuckles and alcohol. I'd have exotic pets. Not the get loose and kill people pets. But pets that are just really interesting. I'd have some snakes. A skunk. An African grey parrot. Possibly a tarantula. Goats. A couple horses. I could spend all day with my animals in my own little no stress happy place. There was a place in my hometown that recently closed. They had Lego tables, robot building, and coding classes. They sold all the stuff they had classes for. Kids could have birthday parties there too. I think I would open it up and run it at a loss for the sake of the community. This is based off of a business model of a family friend. His grandmother loves live jazz, but there really isn't a place in town. She opened up a restaurant and has big names come in there every week. She doesn't care that the restaurant runs at loss. She likes to come in, sit at the bar, and enjoy the music. She can afford this because their family started a small clothing company called Kahat. A comfy backyard tree house featuring the amenities of a regular home and architecture much like that of Rivendell from Lotta. I know Lothlorien makes more sense, but I personally prefer the architecture of Rivendell. I would recreate the library from Beauty and the Beast. The rest of the house will be full of dogs and fully dog friendly, and an elephant sanctuary and rescue outside. I'd spend all of my money and time helping them back into the wild and guarding them. I'd buy my mom a house. She already has one but it's the only one she could really afford when my parents divorce finalized. I'd make sure it had a nice wrap around porch and ample room for her to garden. If I ever hit the lottery, that's my plan. Food, good food. Because I can barely afford food right now, I think that would be my first big purchase. A nice 3 star seafood dinner. A massive bulldozer and backhoe. It'd push dirt around and dig holes for no reason. I think driving those big machines for fun would be a blast. I would also pay people a ridiculous amount of money to clean up ocean trash and roadside trash. I'd start some type of program where you can get paid for any type of recycling you do. I'd go broke quick and it wouldn't last long, but it would be a huge jump start. Finally, I've thought about this a lot. If I had too much money, I'd rebuild the Colossus of Rhodes. 
but in a main city, over a body of water that really doesn't warrant it, and, it'd be built in my body image. Tired eyes, no defined muscles, leanish, a mole on my shoulder I should get checked out, and kind of a weird gut that won't go away, I'd like it to be more of an annoyance than functional. Newcomers will be like what is that but the response will always start with a heavy sigh. Secondly, when I die, or maybe not, cause my irrational fear is being the first immortal, but I don't know it yet. I want an enormous gravesite I'm talking something so grandiose, loud, and boisterous. The great pyramids of Giza would thereby be known as the OK pyramids of Giza. Future generations would traverse the grave, and upon finding me, would say wait, is this that freaking idiot who built a giant monument of himself in the middle of Toronto? It is I. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check another video. Bye for now.